It's a busy stretch of the season for the Rowdies, and tonight they hit the field for the fifth time in 15 days. St. Louis FC is in town for the first ever matchup between these two teams. It's the Rowdies versus St. Louis tonight in St. Petersburg, and your live Rowdies pregame show starts right now. It's Memorial Day weekend and it's Military Appreciation Night here at Al Lang. Some pretty cool stuff planned pregame and halftime to honor our nation's servicemen and women. Hello everyone and welcome to your Rowdies pregame show live on this TV Tampa Bay. We are just over 30 minutes away from kickoff between the Rowdies and St. Louis FC here at Al Lang Stadium as the Rowdies try to power through this hectic stretch of the season. I'm your host Heather Donnelly and joining me here at the desk is color commentator Lee Godfrey. We'll also check in with Rowdy play-by-play -play man Mike Pepper a little bit later in the show. Lee, it's a hectic stretch for the Rowdies, but it's basically the opposite for St. Louis FC. Yeah, it has. They had such a great start to the season. They were undefeated in their first four games. They haven't won in their last four, but because of all the flooding in Missouri, their stadium was underwater and they had to reschedule uh, games. So it's been a long time since they've been playing uh, league games. So for Precky, uh, he is a good coach in his first year. When you're starting to build a team, you, you think that it's going to be tough enough in your first year as the head coach uh, have to deal with all of these circumstances. Well, let's get things started with a few Rowdies news and notes from this past week. Uh, Damian Lowe will not be in the game tonight. He will be sitting out because of his fifth yellow card. So he is suspended for tonight. And also yellow card watch. Georgie Ristov and Darnell King are both on a four yellow card. So if either of those players uh, get one uh, tonight, they will miss the next league match. And now to update you on where the Rowdies stand in the U.S. Open Cup. They won their opening match 3-0 against the Jacksonville Armada U23s and now travel to face Miami FC on Wednesday night. The winner of that match goes on to play Orlando City, a huge potential opportunity for the Rowdies. Yeah, it is, Heather. A lot of changes in the starting 11 for the Rowdies tonight. Just for that reason, Stuart Campbell showing how much he wants to put out his strongest 11 on Wednesday night for an opportunity to play Orlando City of Major League Soccer. Well, now let's take a look at the USL standings. The Rowdies battling for the top spot in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, they are. The Charleston Battery have just been that good this season. Three points ahead of the Rowdies with one game in hand. But you still see teams like the Ottawa Fury, the Rochester Rhinos, and Orlando City B only on nine, seven, and nine games. So games in hand. You do have to win those games to be able to move up the standings. So uh, crucial for the Rowdies to be able to get the full three points at home here tonight. And as we heard earlier, Damian Lowe out tonight because because he's suspended due to yellow card accumulation. And then looking at the injury report, Justin Chavez not available tonight because of a toe injury. Yeah, that's been a tough one for Stuart Campbell because Justin Chavez had made his way back into the starting 11. Uh, so he will miss tonight with the toe and his uh, injury is listed day to day. Now let's check in with play by play announcer Mike Pepper, who's standing by with Rowdy's head coach Stuart Campbell. Mike. Thanks, Heather. And uh... Coach, boy, I got to tell you, we're talking about game after game after game after game. I mean, this is already, I think, the fifth here in 15 days. Still another couple after that. I think when you look at it, how, first of all, how is the how's the team feeling? Uh, you, you've got a few subs to get an opportunity tonight. Yeah, obviously, I've made, I've made a few changes. Like you said, we're in a... We're in the middle of a, a real tough stretch of games coming up, but the, the players have performed really well. Like I said, we had, a, we had one good result on the road. The other one didn't, didn't go as planned, but that was nothing to do with fatigue or anything. I thought we looked very fit, very strong, even in the, the 90, 91st minute. So, yeah, we're looking forward to getting back at home in front of our fans. And, and when you uh, talk about the result going into Rochester, you don't think it had anything to do with the game after game after game? No, definitely not. Definitely not. Like I said, it was a it was a tough game. It was a scrappy game. I think they had two shots on target, scored, scored one. I think we probably had two or three, and unfortunately we couldn't we couldn't score. It just wasn't a it wasn't a great game. We both teams sort of nullified each other. So no, it was it was nothing to do with that. And, and like you said, on the road you you want to try and pick up the bare minimum a point from two road trips we got. We got three points. So all in all, re relatively happy with that return. In contrast, St. Louis hasn't played a lot at all. So uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting balance tonight. Yeah, it is. Obviously, they're, they're nice and fresh. They haven't played played many games of late. So it, it's just one of them things. It's just one of the things that we're, we'll adjust to. Like I said, players, the, the best part of being a professional soccer player is playing games, especially in, in this environment in front of our fans on, on this pitch. So we'll, we'll be ready. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. Lee, Heather, back to you. 
Thank you, Mike. Yesterday, we also caught up with midfielder Alex Morrell and defender Darnell King. Let's hear what those guys had to say about bouncing back tonight against St. Louis here at Al Lang. Obviously, when we play at home, we got our, our fans behind us, big support. Um, you know, when you play at home, it means a lot more. You know, you want to get that win for the people that come out and support you and obviously to move up in the table. So, yeah, we're, uh, we're excited and we're ready to play here. Reaction, reaction, reaction. That's what we say all the time. So uh, we're pretty pissed off about the loss, but we, we moved on and we're looking forward to coming out and getting a win here. It's, it's big for our home supporters and us and just for the season. It's always nice to play on this, this, this nice grass out here, especially coming from hard turf. Ankles are a little sore, but I should be all right for tomorrow. You don't know what to expect out of a team you haven't played before. Obviously, uh, you can do is your research, you know, listen to what your coaches tell you, and just uh, try and play your game more than you know their game. So, um, just expect the unexpected and hope to uh, you know get our three points like we need to. Yeah, I know some of them pretty well, and I played with them last year. Like you said, they're a completely new team, but I know St. Louis teams are always going to fight hard, play hard, and I know that their new coaching staff and the players are going to come out and play. So we got to come out and just trump that, and we'll be all right. Well, the Rowdies clearly disappointed about that loss on Wednesday night in Rochester, but tonight is a great opportunity just a few days later to bounce back. Yeah, you always love as a player to be able to have that game almost immediately after coming off. What wasn't a great performance in Rochester, they just didn't generate enough scoring opportunities after conceding that goal uh, in the first 45 minutes of play. And uh, you heard the guys say it, and, and exactly right, they weren't happy about it, and that they just want to be able to uh, dictate their own game here at Allang Stadium, not to worry about the other team. Uh, in St. Louis. I know Precky from uh, my days in Toronto when he was a head coach there and he is a tough coach to play for. He always has him in great shape. He's a hard worker and he wants 100% out of his players on the pitch every game and that's why he's had so much success as a player and as a coach in the different leagues that he is uh, managed in. Well, a busy stretch for the Rowdies means lots of highlights to show you. So when we come back, we'll recap the Rowdies road games in Rochester and Toronto. You're watching the Rowdies pregame show live on This TV Tampa Bay. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, we're throwing out blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home, throwing out blue Shh. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. On behalf of the Rowdies, to all the men and women in our military, thank you so much for your service. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you to everyone in our military, men and women. Oh, we appreciate everything you do. And uh, we're, here, we're here playing for you, so thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Rowdies and myself, I want to thank all the service men and women out there who've uh, sacrificed so much for us, for our freedoms, to allow us to live in this great country, um, to pursue our dreams, um, especially those who made the ultimate sacrifice and giving their life for these uh, for the callers of uh, our country. And uh, thank you very much, and um, 
you know, we can't, we can't thank you enough. Hey guys, I'm wishing all the military men and women a happy Memorial Day, and I appreciate the service that you give to our country. Hey guys, on behalf of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, just want to wish you all a happy Memorial Day and want to give out a big thanks to all the men and women servicing our country. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, sincerely, from the Tampa Bay Rowdies and myself, Darnell King, we just want to say thank you for your service and uh, uh, everything you do for us. Uh, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do out here. So thank you so much for everything you do for us. Welcome back to your Rowdies pregame show live on this TV Tampa Bay. It's Military Appreciation Night for Memorial Day weekend here at Allang Stadium. Last Friday, the Rowdies had a great performance in Toronto, winning 3-1, to one, not only on the road, but also on turf. But then in a midweek matchup in Rochester, the road woes returned for the Rowdies, falling 1-0 to the Rhinos. Mike Pepper joins us now from the broadcast booth with the highlights from both of those matches. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Heather. And, you know, obviously you go on the road and you uh, get a win in your first one. You, you want to get on a two-road trip at least three points, and the Rowdy's got that. Unfortunately, didn't go well, but we'll start off with the highlights in Toronto and into the 10th minute when a nice ball over the top. It's Lucas Acello. Luca Acello up front. The Rowdy's pull the offside trap. He's able to put it past Matt Pickens, but the story there was he got behind the high line. Toronto FC, two, leads one to nothing. Damian Lowe in the second half finds Georgie Ristoff. Georgie rips one from the top of the box. It's saved by Angelo Cavaluzzo. You can see nice touch and the shot on target. Kept the Rowdy scoreless, but it was the 68th minute when Darwin Jones up the right wing, his cross, able to find Joe Cole as it skipped past Ristoff. And Cole makes no doubt about it as he is able to put it into the back of the net. Rowdies end up tying this one, and Martin Patterson comes on and scores on his very first touch off the free kick from Michael Nanchoff, and the Rowdies take the two to one lead. There's Patterson finishing it. And then in the 82nd minute, Jones gets a little bit of space on the far side. He takes the long shot from about 20, dipping down. It goes in, and the Rowdies end up with the final score and a nice dipping shot winning three to one against Toronto FC two and then Rochester Michael Nanchoff gets an opportunity from about 30 out and it goes just over the crossbar Nanchoff not afraid to fire from distance not able to put it on target though 27 minute Rochester gets the corner kick Pickens was able to say wall falls first shot but fall collects the rebound Able to put it in. Rochester takes a one to nothing lead in the 27th minute. As you see again, Fall able to convert as that ball, no one on the mark coming back to it. 31st minute then, Nanchoff for the Rowdies gets the corner kick and in swinger. Neil Collins a lot on it, but the header right at Thomas Gomez. And Gomez on his line, right angle, keeps it out of the net. Only a chance in the second half, but it was Luke Bowden looking for the far post. Martin Patterson on the opportunity, but it goes wide, and the Rowdies' chances at tying this one up come to an end on Wednesday night. Rochester knocks off the Tampa Bay Rowdies one to nothing, so the Rowdies coming off a one-game losing streak. That snapped uh, the winning streak that they had, guys, and uh, they can't wait to get back on the field to try and get that going in the right direction again. Yeah, absolutely, Mike. And Lee... Those were just two opposite performances from the Rowdies. They just weren't their usual selves on Wednesday night in Rochester. Yeah, they, they weren't. Uh, actually, they didn't have the, the best start like you saw in Toronto as well, but they were able to, to come back and, and have that drive and determination, uh, some good substitutions and some great scoring opportunities against Toronto FC2 to come away with that 3-1 victory and have a lot of confidence going into Rochester to play them on midweek. But after, yeah, falling down 1-0, Wolf Fall had uh, sat out the previous game against the Richmond kickers because of suspension on Saturday so he was happy to get back into the lineup and contribute uh, to the Rhinos and then uh, that rest of that second half just not a lot generated offensively uh, by the Rowdies I thought they maybe should have taken a few more chances and maybe uh, pushed a little forward maybe left themselves open at the back but just to try to get that equalizing goal so you know what it is always good to get like Mike said three points out of two road games that's a fantastic result nonetheless yeah absolutely well we have to step away but don't go anywhere because there's a whole lot more Rowdies Audi's pregame show coming up after the break.
At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love. Like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo. Or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Stain is on the t-shirt. I see it coming out pretty quickly. The stain is gone. That's a huge difference. You can see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now. Looks like the stain is coming out. The OxyClean started to lift it up. I'm pretty impressed. OxyClean, America's number one versatile stain remover. Now get the power of OxyClean in a detergent. One cap beats four of theirs. OxyClean gets the tough stains out. Welcome back to our Rowdies pregame show live on this TV, Tampa Bay. Hope you're having a great start to your Memorial Day weekend. The Rowdies are getting set to take on St. Louis FC tonight here at Alang Stadium. We know the Rowdies look good in their green and gold hoops, but what about when they're not on the field and they choose their own outfits? We asked the Rowdies to tell us which of their teammates they think is the most fashionable, and one player won by a landslide. Check it out. Most fashionable teammate. Um, actually, Damien has came up the ranks. Damien has some good style. Um, most fashionable, Damien. Damien, he, he can put a, a one-two style together. Um, I like to say myself as well. So, um, yeah. Ooh. I think Damien is good, but like Neely dressed really well, like coming game days. He has some good, smart casual. I like Zach, actually, in particular. Sometimes I see him wearing white tennis shirts in his shoes. I don't see that often. But he can wear it and still look good in his job. I like some of the Jamaican style. They dress with a little flair. I can respect that. Apart from myself, obviously. Um, <laughs> There's a few, like Zach P's all right. Darwin, Darwin's decent. There's no horror shows this year. Luke uh, dresses up pretty decent sometimes. Mine, thank God. Yeah. yeah, as I say, he looks after his hair and he's well dressed. He's a good looking man. <laughs> Probably Martin Vingard, he's, he's got some swag. I think uh, Martin, Martin Vingard, he's always uh, dressed really well every day. He sits next to me in the locker room. I'm usually just kind of a t-shirt, shorts and flip-flop flip kind of guy and uh, Martin's coming in looking sharp. Martin Vingard for sure put him in the model and shoot this year. Even like on regular days, he's always coming in with like a little flash to him. It's probably Martin Vingard. Um, the shoe game, I love, I love his shoes. Sometimes jealous of his shoes. Martin Vingard, he pretty fancies himself. He's always got something on this. Uh, he looks pretty smart most days, so probably go with him, yeah. Martin Vingard, Danish, Danish Viking, as he likes to be known. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's a, he could easily go straight onto the catwalk. Martin Vingard, the clear winner of that one. Well, taking a look at the weather for kickoff tonight. Clear day in St. Petersburg, 82 degrees, 0% chance of rain, and just 35% humidity. So it should be a pretty nice night. 
For more features and interviews like the one you saw earlier, be sure to follow the Rowdies on their different social media platforms. You can follow on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram so you don't miss out on any Rowdies updates throughout the week. Check out RowdySoccer.com for more information on how to follow. Also, if you haven't done it already, make sure you download the official Tampa Bay Rowdies app. You can earn points by checking into games and team events and then cash those points in for prizes and exclusive experiences. The app is free and you can download it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Well, kickoff is coming up quickly here in St. Petersburg, so when we come back, we'll take a closer look at St. Louis FC and show you what the Rowdies can expect in tonight's match. Downtown St. Petersburg. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. The fight for the championship continues Saturday at 7.30. Get rowdy at Outland with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Rochester Rhinos. Rochester, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11, and you can meet the players after every game. Rochester, bring your A-game, because the Rowdies are going to kick your ass. Come on, you Rowdies! Some little Rowdies fans enjoying themselves out in the parking lot tonight before tonight's game. Welcome back to our Rowdies pregame show on This TV Tampa Bay. Heather Donnelly and Lee Godfrey joining you live from the concourse of Alang Stadium with kickoff between the Rowdies and St. Louis FC just around the corner. Let's break down St. Louis FC, a team that's in the middle of the pack right now in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, and they haven't played that many games because of all the flooding in Missouri, but Preki has been a winner everywhere he's gone. He's won MLS Cup as a player. He's been named MLS Coach of the Year. He's won titles in almost any league he's coached in. So he will get St. Louis going on the right track for Rowdy's fans. He, uh, you probably just hope it's not tonight. Yeah. Well, now to take a closer look at St. Louis and their style of play, let's flash back to their home opener on April 1st against Ottawa. Yeah, a big win against the Ottawa Fury. And look at this right here from the midfield. A fantastic tackle by Stoichkov, uh, and the counterattack is on to Valeski. He passes it quickly out to uh, Berman outside, and he has a nice finish, a perfect way to get on the counter. St. Louis can make you pay that high line, the quick counter, and it all started by a fantastic midfield tackle by Stoichkov. A little while ago, Mike Pepper caught up with Preki, the head coach of St. Louis FC. Let's hear his thoughts on tonight's match. Thanks, Heather. And uh, coach, uh, welcome into St. Petersburg. It should be a nice evening for a game. It looks uh, a beautiful evening and uh, it's not as humid as uh, we expect it to be. Um, nice conditions, beautiful field, and we're hoping to be a good game. Uh, you, early on in the season, you all started off like gangbusters. Three wins, a draw, able to score some goals. But it's been a struggle as of late. Has it been any particular reason opportunities come and you're just not finishing? Well, the thing is uh, we haven't been uh, playing consistently. Uh, we, haven't, we, have, we have played one league game in the last four and a half weeks. And it's uh, taking a toll on us. Uh, uh, it's been a diff difficult stretch with all the flooding and uh, moving the, the, the sites with training ground and everything else. Uh, but uh, in the same time, 
the group has been um, very good. They've been working very hard. Nobody's been making any excuses. We just got to put it uh, on the field in the game time. No. That schedule, a little bit of an anomaly. You mentioned it, and obviously the difficulty of it. What kind of challenges does Tampa bring to you tonight, or the Tampa Bay Rowdies bring to you? All kinds of challenges. <laughs> they're, they're a good team. Uh, a lot of veteran guys. They've been around. They played quite a in quite a good leagues around the world. So we're expecting a tough game. Uh, it's always a tough game. So we, that's not going to phase us. We'll try to do our own thing. Coach, best of luck tonight. Thank you. Lee, Heather, back to you. Thank you, Mike. Now let's take a look at a key player to watch from each team tonight. All right, let's start with St. Louis uh, FC, and it is Christian Valeski. He's a part of a powerful one-two punch for St. Louis. He's tied with three goals on the year with Jose Angulo in 2015. Valeski tallied eight goals, helping the Rochester Rhinos win the championship. And in 2016, he again led with 12 goals in all competitions. And on the Tampa Bay Rowdy side, Tamika McCandewiri gets his first start of the season with Damian Lowe suspended. Tam was the Iron Man in central defense last season. He's been very patient, waiting for his time to get back in the starting 11. So I don't think he'll miss anything uh, starting at center back position uh, with Neil Collins. Well, like we talked about earlier in the show, these are two teams in very different positions right now. We just heard from Preki, you know, this is their first or their second league game in the last four and a half weeks, whereas the Rowdies are in the middle of a really busy stretch. Where do you think the advantage lies there? The Rowdies maybe being tired, but maybe more in form compared to St. Louis. I, I, I think the Rowdies want to get back home and, and get back to their winning ways, especially with that big U.S. Open Cup match against Miami midweek and, and as well, just needing that quick start and to be able to put away St. Louis early uh, would be key because of the struggles that St. Louis has had this year with the lack of games. You heard Precky say changing uh, their training grounds from week to week because of all the flooding. It's been very difficult to be able to stay positive uh, for this side. So I think an early goal, come out strong in front of the home crowd uh, tonight and get that lead will be crucial for the Rowdies to be able to earn a full three points. Yeah, and because of the busy schedule, a little bit different of a lineup tonight for Tampa Bay, but the Rowdies are lucky to have such a deep team that that shouldn't really have much of an effect. Yeah, I, I do think it speaks to the depth of this team that you can interchange three or four players and really not miss a beat on the pitch and then that bench is just as strong too when you have players like uh, Deshaun Brown and Georgie Ristoff uh, on the bench starting Patterson up top tonight it, it is really uh, a, a good thing for Stuart Campbell to have that luxury to be able to interchange those players game in and game out especially with this super busy schedule. Well, it should be a good one tonight. That wraps up tonight's pregame show for Lee Godfrey, Mike Pepper, and our entire broadcast crew. I'm Heather Donnelly. Thank you for joining us. Rowdies versus St. Louis FC is up next. Shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg.
Well, it's a leisurely Memorial Day weekend here in downtown St. Petersburg. Fans making their way by boat even to Al Lang Stadium as we prepare for the Tampa Bay Rowdies and St. Louis FC here in St. Petersburg. Mike Pepper alongside Lee Godfrey. And Lee, it's a really a tale of two teams that have totally different parts of the season, even though we're at Memorial Day, as the Rowdies and themselves have, in the midst of seven games in 22 days, game five, where St. Louis hasn't played basically but three games in the last three weeks. Yeah, and St. Louis went undefeated in their first four league games, haven't won in four league games, where the Rowdies are coming off that disappointing loss in Rochester, want to get back to winning games before their massive U.S. Open Cup. Cup game in Miami midweek. That is coming up, but tonight we do have a few players or a couple players that we really want to keep our eyes on here. Uh, yeah, for the Rowdies, how about this? His first league start of the year, and Tamika McKendawiri in for uh, Damian Lowe, who is suspended because of a yellow card uh, accumulation. He will fit in perfect, though, beside Neil Collins tonight. And Christian Voleski uh, tied with three goals uh, for the team league, uh, and you got to watch him tonight up top for St. Louis FC. We are preparing for Military Appreciation Night here at Al Lang Stadium. Kickoff and starting lineups coming up next. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. There's a lot to a name. Especially when that name is a world leader in healthcare. We still deliver the same compassion we've provided for 90 years. Plus the excellence you expect from Johns Hopkins. Together we can conquer the biggest challenges and offer your child the very best care. When, when it, it comes, comes to kids, kids, choose Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. We got the sun. to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. That star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the It is Military Appreciation Night here at Al Lang Stadium, downtown St. Petersburg. We are a couple of minutes away from kickoff between the Tampa Bay Rowdies and St. Louis FC. Mike Pepper alongside Lee Godfrey. And let's get a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Yeah, here's a look at Precky's side. Uh, their scoring duo of Christian Valeski and Jose Angulo up top. And they did make a change in goal tonight from their main starting keeper, number 99, Adam Grinwis, gets the start in goal for St. Louis FC. And for the Rowdies? A few changes, of course, because of the U.S. Open Cup midweek. Uh, Martin Patterson starts up top. Alex Morell in on that right-hand side. Key Savage gets in in that holding midfield position. And again, Tamika McCanda weary in for the suspended uh, Damian Lowe. And Matt Pickens gets that start in goal. And the third member of our team down on the sideline, Heather Donnelly. Hi, Mike. 
We spoke with St. Louis FC head coach Precky earlier this week, and he said he was worried about a couple of things. His team's form being that this is only their second league game in the last four and a half weeks. And he was also concerned about the weather. It's been very cool in St. Louis recently, and he expected it to be very hot here. But like he said in his pregame interview with Mike, it's not as humid as they expected it to be. And being out here now, it actually feels nice. There's a little bit of a breeze, and it's not that humid. So his worries, not really that big of a deal, guys. Thank you, Heather. And uh, let's get a look at the head coaching matchup. Precky, you're familiar with Lee from his time up in Toronto and obviously his time in MLS to work Campbell in his third season. Uh, yeah, Precky just as a player was fantastic. He won Major League Soccer title in 2000. Coach of the year uh, in 2007. He won the USL title as a coach uh, with Sacramento Republic in 2014. Uh, so he is just a uh, one of those hardworking coaches, a disciplined person. You have to work for this guy. Uh, one thing I remember about him is how much he would make a Toronto FC run. You were you were fit if you were on that team. When you thought training was over as a player, that meant you still had four more laps of the pitch to do. He, he would drain a lot of players. It takes a, a tough-minded player uh, to play under Precky. Well, spring is coming to an end here in the uh, Northern Hemisphere as we head into summer. What that means at Al Lang Stadium, the sun will be a little bit of a factor for the first few minutes of this game. The field runs not quite straight east to west. Some of the buildings are in the way. St. Louis won the toss. They opted to defend what will be the sun. Go from right to left on your screen. They'll be wearing white head to toe. Tampa Bay Rowdies in their green and yellow hooped shirts and socks, green shorts. But it'll be Matt Pickens who will have to keep his eyes open here at the start as uh, at least at least shaded a little bit from the sun. Yeah, this is normally what we see uh, at the beginning of a match for the Rowdies, uh, depending on how the coin toss goes. Uh, the Rowdies always prefer uh, to take that right-hand side of the pitch on your screen, and it's exactly for that reason. Matt Pickens, you can see him already putting his hand up to shade himself from the sun. As the Rowdies test with Alex Morell pushing wide, Danielle Shesky gave us the starting whistle, and she's in the center, Esteban Rosano. Hassan Belmdehia, Elvis Osmanovic is your fourth official. Rowdies get the ball. That's Morell gets it back to Keith Savage. Savage with this appearance tonight is moved into second on the modern all-time list. Passing to Kui Yamada. As that ball deflected, run down towards the corner. It will roll off of St. Louis. Let's see the number of games played. The big part right there early on. Rowdies with three more league played games than St. Louis. Yeah, and more recently, it was about the goals that St. Louis has conceded. Uh, they started the season very well, and they haven't scored many goals uh, in their last four games. They barely got through their U.S. Open Cup match, Mike, against Wichita. It had to go to extra time for them to win 4-3 to three, uh, against a much lower division team. Well, that early on deflection, Stoikov, who is the captain tonight, he was the one who the ball came off. He is up, but he was down for just a moment. Yeah, he's a big physical presence in that midfield for the St. Louis. He was kind of that general to be able to move that ball forward to left and right. He's been fantastic at getting Christian Valeski and Jose Angulo involved in matches. Six goals between the two of those strikers tonight. Looking long for Patterson. St. Louis able to run it down. That was Pleva. Conrad Pleva with it at his feet. He uses goalie Grinwis, who has to send it back up towards midfield. First one there is Schaefer, but St. Louis will come away with a loose ball, but Schaefer will get it back. Played towards a corner. And not kept in bounds by Angulo. It's Wesley Sharpie. Sharpen Springs. I am a USF. Alum, as is Wesley Sharpie, and he's getting a chance to come back home, Lee. And I think we heard a little bit of a, the crowd kind of a little roar for Wesley Sharpie in the introductions. Yeah, a lot of the fans here, they, they know their, their college soccer quite well, a dedicated bunch, and a, a lot of players that do come back to Al Lang Stadium uh, get noticed here. Sharpie will intercept that ball into it. It's played back to Grinness. He'll send it up towards midfield. And unchallenged is Stoikov. Able to turn his Angulo, but recovering is Savage. To finish that thought, Savage now in second as he passes to Kuyamata, tying it a little earlier in the year. 
Georgie Ristoff is the all time leader and he got that record a little earlier in the year. He's been able to add a couple games onto it. He's on the bench tonight. We would expect to probably see him at some point in time, but not in the starting lineup tonight. These have been pretty good at home as well. Five of six games have resulted in them walking away a winner, Charleston. And that was a big difference, Mike, last year with the Rowdies. That ball collected by Grinwis as Patterson was looked as the target. Grinwis strong off his line and goes over Patterson, and able to come down with it. Just too many draws, uh, as we mentioned last year at home, dropping those points because they did manage to play pretty well on the road. You get draws and you don't expect to win all of them, but you get a couple of wins. But if you take care of business at home, uh, that is the big difference that the Rowdies need to in front of the home fans here at Al Lang. Ball looking up for Patterson. Still caught from side to side. That one's sent up. Patterson on his chest. Walls with him. He'll come away with it. Playing it inside. And now as it's sent back across, here's Plava up the field. Wesley Sharpie on the far side. Sharpie leads the team for St. Louis in minutes played this year. And Sharpie is taken down by Marcel Schaefer. And there's a look at Matt Pickens, native of Washington, Missouri, in the St. Louis area. So fans watching up there be familiar with him and his career through Major League Soccer and North American Soccer League and now the United Soccer League and MLS Cup champion, Colorado Rapids. St. Louis is, it is a really dedicated soccer destination, Mike. Home, of course, of the Mac Herman Award to the top collegiate players in the nation. I had the pleasure of going to one of those award ceremonies early. Well, and I got to correct. I think the foul was on Leo Fernandez, and the caution was just shown—a late caution. But I think I, I don't—I don't understand the lateness of that. I don't disagree with it. I thought probably as a cautionable offense to start with, but after a talking to Leo Fernandez, didn't get anything. She goes back over and sees the injured player, Wesley Sharpie. He asked, and she obliged. Caution to Fernandez here early on in the sixth minute. So St. Louis has an opportunity to send this one across. It is cleared away by Fernandez. As Aiden Stanley sends it back into the box, it's headed down. Loose ball comes to the feet of St. Louis. Darnell King now. And that one's deflected. It will go out. It will be a throw in. And for viewers in Tampa Bay after the action on the field, check out all the movie action on Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel this TV Tampa Bay digital 32.2 spectrum 630 frontier Fios 463 and Comcast 229 almost a foul throw there they look to go long but instead it's dropped short by Stanley it is cleared away by the Rowdies Patterson and Cole work to get on the near side Cole will earn the throw Morrell Stepped in front, and Gula will pick Collins under pressure. And now Pickens will have to send it up towards the field and towards Fernandez. He and Sharpie tied up. Sharpie comes away with this one and now heads it to Walls. Walls able to turn, will send it wide. There's Dalgard, Sebastian Dalgard getting a start tonight. Now Sharpie again. Good start early here for St. Louis FC, Mike. But not to be surprised uh, because we just haven't seen the Rowdies come out to quick starts very often this season. Stuart Campbell practices patience and opportunities will come. Let the game kind of flow a little bit into uh, some sense of, uh, of just being more of a, a two-sided affair out there. St. Louis is the one that wants to come out strong here. The Rowdies want to defend that and wait until it slows down a bit to start getting their opportunities. That's what they've done many times this season. 
Offside was the call. McCandawiri send this in for Patterson. He tries to flip it on. Instead, it goes over. It will go out. It will be a goal kick for Krenwitz. Looks like more of a 3 4 3 for St. Louis tonight. Maybe even a 3 5 2. As they tuck in, Grinwis will send everyone up across midfield. He'll take the goal kick. Kanda Weary up and challenges when will come down to Dalgard. Dalgard playing on the left side now. Will earn the free kick. Yeah, foul there called on Alex Morrell. I like what we saw out of him, Mike, in the U.S. Open Cup game here against Jacksonville Armada under 23s. He really brings a lot of speed to the outside and really likes to, you know, make those diagonal runs into the box. And he really contributed in that match in the U.S. Open Cup victory. That's dropped down. Now sent back out as Stoikoff sends it out wide. Now on the overlapping run, it's taken here, and Leo Fernandez able to cut inside. He'll try and drop it for Patterson. Patterson and well, actually it was Nanchoff who was in on the run. Patterson after the play. And we'll see as it's Joe Cole that gets a talking to. And as they set that up, let's check in with Heather Donnelly. Hi, Mike. You guys were just talking about Alex Morrell. Yesterday, after head coach Stuart Campbell named the starting lineup for tonight's game, Alex Morrell said that he blacked out a little bit when he heard his name. He was so excited to be named a starter. So that's a guy who's definitely looking to make the most of the opportunity to start tonight's game, guys. And an opportunity it is, is to create some danger. We have seen Morrell come in a little bit on the road. That one's over the head of Angulo. It's going to go too far. It will be a goal kick for the Rowdies. And we welcome those watching on Estrella TV today. As we pass the 10 minute mark, scoreless here at Al Lang Stadium, Matt Pickens looking into the sun. Back and Gulo down. Saw Jose and Gulo last year against the Rowdies. That one trying to go in and it's headed up by Pleva. Taken away. This is Fernandez. Cole wide to Patterson. Patterson and Fernandez working together now. Towards the corner. Sent across in the control there by Wesley Sharpie. He'll play it long. Boleski can't control it. McCandaweary uses his outlet in the form of Matt Pickens. Pickens looking long for Morrell. Morrell in the battle with Stanley. It goes off of Stanley and he'll get it back now. Cavalcetta looking long. Cavalcetta Bounces over Angulo. He and Collins are tied up. Used back to Pickens. Not a good clearance up low in the middle, but not controlled well there by Alahanzic. And Leo Fernandez will get the long ball. Fernandez cuts inside. He's taken down by Sharpie. Those two have now combined on a couple of fouls, and we'll see whether or not Wesley Sharpie, he will. Looks like the pot card is coming out of the pocket. Was it retaliation in the sense of the other one? It is. Wesley Sharpie with a caution. Leo Fernandez with a caution. Those two will be tangled up most of the night. Rowdy's, though, in the meantime, will have a free kick just over 30 yards out. A fairly dangerous opportunity here. Now here's another look at it here, and uh, certainly Wes Sharpie is late on that call, and you're right, there has been that battle, and... Danielle Chesky is not having any of it early on. So in the first 12 minutes of this game, two yellow cards shown. So Joe Cole is over. He's with Nanchoff. The wall being marked off. Danielle Chesky, it'll be about five yards past the 18. So we'll see it's 33 yards out.
Anchoff over the ball. Cole looking to go on net and has to tip it over is Grinwitz. Grinwitz looked to be trying to play the ball going into the box. Instead, Cole goes on goal and Grinwitz able to get just underneath his crossbar. Yeah, good positioning by Adam Grinwitz here as he dives and falls back and is able to get that with his trailing right arm and tip it over the crossbar. Michael Nanchoff with the U.S. Ameribank corner kick. It will be an end swinger. Towards the back post. Collins is there, heads it down, it's headed away. Loose ball to Savage. Shot it, deflected, it's still free in the box. McCandon weary with it, he'll get it back to Morrell. Morrell's got wide and Nanchoff again, and good pressure by St. Louis will force him out. Morrell stepped in, taken away. Nanchoff will have to throw. A good opportunity there off the corner for the Rowdies, their first big scoring chance of this first half. Towards the box, Patterson off the chest, headed down by St. Louis, and now it will go out. It will be another U.S. Ameribank corner kick for the Rowdies. Nanchoff will do this one. We'll see a little bit. Collins had a free header inside the six on the last one. We'll see what the Rowdies choose to do this time. They'll play it short, quickly. Morrell around it. Heads were turned. Morrell tries to play it in. It's deflected. Leo Fernandez running away from the net. He's marked by Capelseta. He's able to turn. It's Cole. Taken away by St. Louis. They've got a little opportunity. His white shirt's breaking out on the counterattack. Yeah, they do. Tamika McCandaweary is trying to track back. He was very forward on that corner kick. And it's going to fall, and it's going to go around. to McCandaweary, loose ball still, and it's off of the Rowdies. It will be a corner kick. Opportunity there as Stoikov came in. The counterattack, very dangerous for St. Louis. Yeah, great counterattack by St. Louis FC. You see Tamika McCandaweary getting back, but there you see him at the middle of the park, and now he really has to start tracking back because uh, this was not played uh, well by the defense as Darnell King had an opportunity to clear. He does it, and by that time, McCandaweary could get to it by the time uh, Stoichkov could get to it, so he didn't have that opportunity on goal. And they've, in fact, given a goal kick to the Rowdies. To Stoikov's complaint. But after the goal kick, the Rowdies will look to send it up. This one, opportunities for both teams now as Morrell will run down the loose ball. Savage. Nanchoff looking to slot it through. Sharpie steps in front of the ball for Fernandez. And St. Louis will have it. Yeah, after some opening possession moments by St. Louis FC, you're absolutely right, Mike. This game has opened up a heck of a lot more as the Rowdies uh, seem to be pushing a little bit higher in closing down uh, St. Louis FC, and it's caused some turnovers. Here's Darnell King, now Nanchoff. Marcel Schaefer. Now he's under a little pressure now. Collins and McCanda Weary going back towards their own goal. St. Louis stepping up the pressure. They'll force a deflection and now the turnover. Here's Dalgard. Walls with it. Walls looking to go back across. Headed away by Darnell King, and it will go out. And the latest USL News is on Sirius XMFC. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Channel 85. Sirius XMFC will also air the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Back up towards midfield, header one, and now McCanda Weary looking long for Patterson. Challenge, there's a couple of bodies, and they'll call it off of St. Louis, off the foul, and it will be a free kick for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We play the 18th minute here in St. Petersburg. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, Heather Donnelly, scoreless between the Tampa Bay Rowdies, St. Louis FC. Here on this Memorial Day weekend.
Pickens shielding his eyes just a little bit almost out of the sun not quite. And we'll see probably the Rowdy's next game is Patterson called for cleats up on walls. With the longest day of the year being June 21st. Rowdy's only one more home game prior to that date. And then we'll see everything shortening as we head to the second half of the year. Here is Cavalcetta. Play towards the corner, McCanda Weary. Down the line, and that will go over the line and be a goal kick, or a throw in, excuse me. It'll be interesting to see, Mike, how this game progresses. If fatigue does set in at all for the Rowdies with the U.S. Open Cup, then going to Toronto, then Rochester. The good news it is really from Toronto to Rochester, a quick 30-minute flight over Lake Ontario. So it's not like they had to make, you know, big long flights in between their road games. But then you do have to come back from Rochester. They trained very briefly uh, on Friday. Um, just to be able to give them uh, enough rest to be able to be ready for this match tonight. Sent towards the corner. <clears throat> now Angulo with the second ball. Angulo will drop it in for Dalgard. Dalgard trying to slot it across. And it's read there by Schaefer, who uses the left foot to go long for Patterson. If he can keep it in, he's got an opportunity with numbers, at least earned a throw. As they were going through, they'll quickly look Morrell, but now St. Louis has recovered. Opportunity with Morrell, Cole, and Patterson. A good job by Patterson, at least earning a throw, running it towards the side. Here's Cole, able to turn. Joe Cole, Patterson, Morrell. Nick it inside. It's going to find Cole. Cole onside, and it will be deflected and off of Alahadzic. And it will be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Good vision there by Joe Cole. He actually put his head up and saw no one was right across the six, and he tried to cut it back. It got blocked by St. Louis defending well, but that vision by Joe Cole just to see he's not going to waste the ball. He's going to try to get it to a player in green and gold. Nanchoff towards the back post. It's headed up and away. Leo Fernandez, first one to it. Goes through Wesley Sharpie, Sharpie, and ball goes through him. It seemed to be maybe an obstruction, but no call on that one. I would tend to think that's clear obstruction, Mike. He had the nutmeg going on right through the legs, and he's basically just, oh yeah, that's that's an easy call right there. And that's Sharpie again, who's already on a yellow card. That one sent across, and Weary able to head it away. done more there than just stand up for Nendez. He moved to his right and made sure he got a piece of him. And for viewers in Tampa Bay, this TV has your chance to win a PS4 Pro console and a copy of FIFA 2017. Plus a special autographed item from the Rowdies. Watch Rowdies home games on this TV and look for the clue. Go to mor-tv.com for more information. King. Across the field to Schaefer. Now Cole. Cole able to turn. Deflection. It'll go out. It'll be a throw in. It's Schaefer's cross blocked by Wesley Sharpie. Deflected to Savage. He's able to keep it. Out wide to Fernandez. Whipped in and punched away by Grinwis. Good job by Grinwis of getting that out, but it's still not out of danger yet as Cole in the top of the 18, but cleared away now by Aiden Stanley. Another good job and another good ball into the six yard box by the Tampa Bay Rowdies. And some confidence there by Adam Grinwis just to dive into that and punch that one away.
So the free kick will go for the Rowdies. Nanshoff will wait. Collins and McCanda weary up from their center back positions. Rowdies will talk in. Look to send this one up into the area. Look like they have something working maybe. As Nanchoff asked for 10 yards, they'll trip back up Stoikov. Just a little bit. Nanchoff towards the back post looking for Collins. He's able to head it back, but not able to get a lot on it. It's taken, sent up the field by Alahadzic and will be off of Alex Morrell. Walls with a little space. Sharpie from his right back position drops it in. That's a bad ball behind him and now sent back. Patterson and Cole. Cole wide out for Fernandez. Fernandez to the in line. Now he's double teamed. He's able to find Schaefer. Schaefer with a little space now. Three bodies in. Can he find one of them? Morrell running in, but it's headed away by Stanley. Back out to Fernandez. Rowdies will send another ball in. This one's headed away by Playba. It'll be a throw in. Two good balls into the box by the Rowdies. The first one by Marcel Schaefer. And this back four for St. Louis has their work cut out for them. They've yet to make a mistake, but if the pressure continues by the Rowdies, it's going to be difficult to defend this all night long. Patterson has whistled for a foul again. This time that was after on a shirt pull. And that is his third foul. So Daniel Chesky is saying no more. Officially only one caution each team. Wesley Sharpie for St. Louis. Leo Fernandez for the Rowdies. I would imagine that Patterson, should we hear a whistle blow for anything other than offsides on him, we'll see a card. And up the field, it's over Collins, headed down nicely by Angulo for Valeski. Valeski going at McKenna Weary, or deflect off of McKenna Weary. He's able to keep it in bounds, and he'll find the open man as they work it out slowly. Looking now, Sharpie though heads it back. Solid work there from McCann Weary. That's when you have that depth, Mike, that if you're missing someone like a Damian Lowe, the fact that you can slot in someone who wore the captain band a lot last season from McCann Weary. Over the top for Cole, and it's slightly behind him on the touch. Not able to send it in front of him. Morrell, and he's pushed Sharpie from behind. Morrell ran a long way. It looked like a deliberate foul of some sort, but I don't know if it was more clumsiness or a shove. I'm going to look at it here. It's you see the Rowdy's got the turnover from Morrell. Cole tried to push it in front of him, just couldn't. And almost just hit the front of his shin awkwardly as he had that right leg back. And if he could have just brought that forward, that would have been a fantastic opportunity for Joe Cole. Grinwis, long, Morrell on it. Morrell looking for Patterson. Patterson gets the ball. He's in on net. Not a great angle. But he's going to cut it back onto the left foot. That one deflects off of St. Louis. And it will be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick as Cavalsetta came back and almost put it into his own net. Instead, it's out for a corner. Now the pressure continues to mount on St. Louis FC. And you see the cut in there. And a good job by Cavalletta to be able to knock that away. A lot of defending. Nanchoff towards the back post. Headed down by McCanda Weary. It will be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick on the far side. Joe Cole is over there. He may take this one, but they're going to let Nanchoff make the 70 yard run. Or light jog, shall we say. One corner to the other. This time, though, it'll be an outswinger for the left-footed Nanchoff. 
back post is Collins. We're going to look to go back post with McCanda Weary though. That one's headed up by Cavalsetta. And Gulo and Savage are tied up. It will be off of Savage and he's seeing the loose ball. Well, right now, the St. Louis defenders on all these corner kick might are doing a better job of, of being the first ones to get ahead to that ball and clear it away. Rowdy's careless in that area as that one had the pocket picked. St. Louis will get the ball back and recovery by Darnell King with Morrell. Good pressure though by St. Louis forces the turnover of the St. Louis ball. Looking long, McCanda Weary. Again, a welcome to those watching on Estrella TV. Offside is the call. As Valeski is in that position. Good look at Precky, St. Louis coach. And Lee, our director, keeps wanting us to say that last name, but I'm going to continue going with Precky. Yeah, I'm just glad that uh, his son's not getting into the match either because then we'd be forced <laughs> to stay his last name, but he never goes by it, so that's a, that's a blessing for us. But uh, 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 certainly, yeah, he was a, a fantastic player, MLS MVP on a couple of occasions. Uh, represented the United States of America well, had a famous goal as they beat Brazil 1-0 in a Gold Cup. So he, he's been a, a great player, a lot of roots in the in Kansas City area, and now coaching for, for St. Louis. The son does get in on Colin Precky too. I don't care what they say. <laughs> and now by two, I mean TWO. Rowdy's with the loose ball. Keith Savage and Michael Nanchoff in those holding midfield positions working together. They'll give it back to McCanda Weary. Now out to King. <laughs> Cole with room to turn, but he'll play it wide to King. Some numbers on the near side if he wants to go to Morrell, but he'll cut it inside. Look for the open Marcel Schaefer coming up from his left back position. Schaefer's got a cannon, but he's going to go with the cross under the back post. Morrell sends it across. Grenwitz drops it. No one's there. Morrell probably wanted to do a little more with it, but Grenwitz seemed to have it. Almost gave the Rowdies a gift, but able to cover it up. Yeah, the Rowdies didn't expect that, neither did Grinwis as they started to walk away here after Morrell puts it back in. And that one he drops, goes off his knees. Lucky he didn't go too far. You can see the look of concern on Grinwis. Kind of knuckled on Morrell. Didn't get a lot on it, I think, just the timing of it. Schaefer. The Rowdies, we're into the 32nd minute. There's Grinwitz with it. He'll roll it out short. Alahadzic working with Walls in the middle. Walls gets it back. And Alahadzic sent across. Sharpie you now. Clava for St. Louis. Schaefer. Pickens under slight pressure, sends it up towards midfield. Walls is uncontested right now. Patterson wanted to go, but again, you don't want to get called for the foul knowing you've had that verbal warning at this point. Save the booking that is probably imminent at some point for something a little more warranted, I would think. Here's Walls. Up, King heads it down. Second ball is going to fall to Dalgard. In towards the corner offside on the near side. And the USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. 
Stay up to date with all the latest league news by visiting uslsoccer.com and follow the league on Twitter at USL. I guess the ball rolled over the line so the Rowdies will take the goal kick as opposed to it since the run by Valeski was stopped so we'll say it is a goal kick. Pickens takes it looking for Patterson. Nanchoff. Mike Nanchoff has had a few starts for the Rowdies, but it hasn't necessarily been in that holding position. Justin Chavez came down with a toe injury in Toronto. He's missing a little time. Martin Vingard getting a little bit of a break, and as we talk about that rowdy schedule, very much needed. That's when you have the experience of a Savage and a Nanchoff who can step into that. It's a good thing for the Rowdies. Yeah, it is a really good thing. And, it, and those are guys that on a lot of other teams, Mike, could be starters on any other team as well. So it really does show the depth and experience on this Tampa Bay Rowdy side. I think tonight, even with some of these guys coming off the bench, they're doing a great job of moving St. Louis from left to right. Well, that was a bad turnover by McCanda Weary in his own third. Walls with it, and Savage covers up for McCanda Weary. Now an opportunity as that ball played towards Patterson. Will they be able to keep it in? He will. And on the tackle, as Stanley comes across, it'll be a throw. Great effort by Patterson on that ball that was just a little bit too heavy from Joe Cole to catch up to it and at least force the throw. Marcel Schaefer on the far side. Give it back to Morrell. Morrell cutting inside. Has Nanchoff who will switch the field out to Schaefer. Schaefer left foot towards the back post over everyone. Morrell on it. Let's it run. We go one on one with Stanley on the near side. Now he'll send it across, headed down. Loose ball, Nanchoff. He's going to tee it up. It's going to be stopped by Patterson who turns. And his shot will go well wide. Goal kick. St. Louis. Yeah, you see Patterson put his hand up there, Mike. I think he's a little bit frustrated that he got in front of that one. Let's see if there would have been a clear path. Uh, I think that Grinwis would have been there anyways if you see the way that that ball was going. Yeah, I think Grinwis would have uh, made at least the initial save. We did see him bobble one, but I don't think it was had a eyes for a corner. You're right. But still Patterson doing his best to, because he stopped that one to try to make the quick turn. But just got a little bit underneath that ball and sent it over the bar. Manchoff on the foul. Free kick will go St. Louis' way as Alahansic will play it quickly. Out to Pleva. Conrad Pleva. A throw in for the Rowdies and for viewers in Tampa Bay. Catch the Rowdies at home all season on this TV Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel and this TV at digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Files 462, and Comcast 229. This TV, your broadcast home for Rowdy soccer. Fernandez able to go through the legs, but second ball tackled away. And now opportunity is Angulo looking long for Voleski. Valeski tied up and McCanda Weary goes down. Rowdy's on the advantage, able to come away. Schaefer towards Cole. Cole, one on one out wide. Joe Cole sends that one across and it will be yet another 
U.S. Ameribank corner kick for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I believe that may be six for the half. They've been accumulating these chances. And aside from a, a couple of them, St. Louis has done a pretty good job defending the last couple, but there have been opportunities. Yeah, there have been, and I think that the Rowdies may be a little frustrated that they haven't been able to do better when you do get this many set pieces. Uh, they train so often on this, Mike. Well, they'll play a quick short to Cole. He'll send it in. Loose ball still in the box, and now it's cleared away, and that seemed to be Dalgard who got it out. They'll look for Valeski, who doesn't have a lot of help, so we'll try and take it wide, try and create it, and it's a good tackle by Darnell King. King into Schaefer, and now the Rowdies will look to get the numbers back. But St. Louis still has eight shirts behind the ball. Morrell. Bad touch by Morrell, but it may come out to his advantage if he can go towards the corner. He'll get whistled for the foul as Stanley stepped in front of him. It appeared Stanley stepped in front and went down, but Morrell will even get a caution for that. I don't know if it's for kicking the ball away afterwards, but certainly debatable if the foul was That's warranted. That's for slamming the ball, Mike, and it's never a foul on Morrell. Never a foul. He's being he's being played out. There is no way Stanley's playing this ball and that's in the run of play and Morrell has every right to get to that ball and he in fact would have won that ball if it wasn't for Stanley so I can absolutely understand the frustration of Alex Morrell and Danielle Chesky she can't let this game get out of hand by every time that there is a foul it can't be a card every time and right now everything is being exaggerated now players on either team don't really know they're going to be hesitant going into a challenge which they think they should be able to because they have no clue if the card is going to come out as we've seen now three yellows in the first half well, as we see it was for the bounce of the ball but as you pointed out Lee there was no foul in that sense Stanley basically stepped in front and stumbled but the lines and to be fair the linesman waving the flag it was right in front of him well, he could easily have waved it for the foul on what uh, on Wes Wesley or Stanley sorry. Well here's Joe Cole Cole wrapped around and he'll get a free kick dangerous opportunity for the Rowdies. Cole had arms around the shoulders as Plava pulls him down and the Rowdies with a chance they should be able to go straight on net from an opportunity about 26 yards out. And that will be a caution on Plava. Actually Alahazic. I don't I don't see this going 90 Mike at this rate without a player being sent off. Ella Hodzic is on the caution. And appears to be for descent. Nanchoff is over this. So is Schaefer both of them on the left foot but it's Nanchoff who is teeing this one up. The wall will be marked off. I think it'll be about two yards inside the box. Maybe even three yards inside the box. So we'll say that's at this point 15 25 yards out Michael Nanchop. Well now Chesky trying to back that line up the wall from St. Louis FC. I think this is plenty to get up and down Mike. Uh, this is like the perfect range here if they get it. Schaefer and Nanchop. and at this point they're breaking the wall up. We'll see if Plava is going now Plava on this thing he may actually get another caution at this point. We'll see what happens here. Plava is saying it's too far but it looks about right. And now she's actually stepping it back. At this point. She actually marked the line now she's saying back and now at this point she's letting them go back to where they originally were. And it will be Nanchoff over and just wide of the goal. That ball got up and down. As a matter of fact, it almost bounced for across the goal line, but it was wide. Oh, another excellent opportunity. We see from behind the goal here, and boy, oh boy, there was plenty of room there for Nanchoff. He had the right amount of spin on that ball. If he spins that, originally aims at the center of the goal. Adam Grinwis didn't move, Mike, and he would have found the back of the net. Looking long Cole off the chest able to bring it down. They'll say it went off of Joe Cole. 
And soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. So they'll say this one went off of Joe Cole. Throw will go St. Louis's way. Cole brings it down again, drops it short for Nanchop. Nanchop with space sends it wide out for King. King cuts inside. Doesn't have a lot. He'll drop it for Morrell. He gives it to Savage. I think now as this game moves on, Mike, this is where game minutes versus practice minutes are really starting to affect St. Louis FC with their lack of uh, first team games in this season so far. It's not the same as practice when you're playing against your own players. The physicality of it and what you can and can't do is completely different when you're not getting those games in. And the Rowdies is playing so many games uh, in a period of time. They, they seem to be the one now firing on all cylinders. It's just a matter of that quality in that final third to finish. They seem to be a little unlucky as well, just a, a foot or an inch away from getting that, that final foot on in the box when St. Louis has been able to clear the ball out of the six and the 18-yard box. Campbell Seto over and through Martin Patterson. Whistled for the foul as we're entering the 45th minute here at Al Lang Stadium. First half coming to an end. It's scoreless. Schaefer on it. And Gulo and Collins. Collins able to get to it. We'll send it to McCanda Weary. Pickens. Up to midfield. King on it now. Keeps it in. 45th minute now coming to a conclusion. The fourth official shows two minutes. Two minutes of stoppage time. Again back to Pickens and Pickens sends it out. Fernandez taken down by Sharpie. And we've seen this. Rowdies will play it quickly as Fernandez is down, but Schaefer's on it. Marcel Schaefer, there's a lot of green and yellow shirts in the box. That shirt, shot, or excuse me, cross blocked. Fernandez still down, sent in. Patterson flips it on. It'll be a goal kick. So words on the sideline now as Leo Fernandez still down. Well, he appeared to get cleaned out from behind again, Mike, and I'm not sure and again, yeah. if, if there was a piece of the ball and you've got Sharpie on a card and Danielle Chesky has to know that he's on a card, but when you see a tackle here, we'll have, have a look at it again. Uh, he's come in with the leg. He, he has hit the ball. He's made contact with it as well, but he's got a piece of Fernandez. So that battle continues right to the end of the first half between those two players. Yes, it does. Have each been booked tonight. As Voleski will send it back to Sharpie. Sharpie looking. Gets it back. Off of Savage, a deflection. Second ball, McKenna Weary holds it stand, but it's loose in. And now it's taken by the Rowdies. Final seconds. Let's see if any extra seconds are added on since Fernandez was down for about a half minute of stoppage time. Savage is fouled. Free kick will go the Rowdy's way. See if the Rowdy's want to try and send it up to the box here, knowing this may be the last kick of the half. Collins towards the corner looking for Fernandez. Poked away by Sharpie and as he pokes it away, the halftime whistle blows scoreless here at Al Lang Stadium. Al Lang Stadium is a scoreless half. Right now, Heather Donnelly is standing by with the St. Louis head coach, Precky. Heather? Thank you, Mike. 
Coach, with this being your second league game in about a month, that's a pretty big challenge heading into this. How do you think your team has responded so far? We're working really hard. Uh, I think the guys are uh, uh, ex working extremely hard for each other. It's just we're going to be a little bit better on the ball in the, in the final part of the field because at the moment, every time we get to this area, we just become stagnant. We don't move enough uh, for each other, and, and then it's difficult to play. What adjustments can you make in the second half to generate some offense here? We'll see. We'll talk about it with the guys, see how they feel. All right. Thanks, Coach. Guys. Thanks, Heather. And uh, we'll talk about that. We'll look at the highlights, too. A lot coming up in the next few minutes. Halftime here at Al Lang Stadium. Scoreless between St. Louis and Tampa Bay. You're watching Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Today, we can connect more. Play more. Do more. And all that more takes energy. At Duke Energy, we're doing more too. More innovative technology, like ways to fix outages before they happen, for more reliable energy every day. So no matter how much you do, we're always here. With power for your life. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, we're Florida Blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. Welcome back to Al Lang Stadium. Tampa Bay Rowdies and St. Louis, both with zeros on the scoreboard. We're at the half. Mike Pepper alongside Lee Godfrey. And uh, it really, we, we saw this. St. Louis had a good part of uh, play early on, Lee. Uh, but the Rowdies for the last 30 minutes of the half really kind of controlled play. Uh, maybe a little unfortunate not to put something in the back of the net. Yeah, they certainly did. St. Louis FC had a lot of defending to do in the latter half of that first 45 minutes of play. And they did a good job of it as you take a look at those first half highlights. And, and yeah, Matt Pickens didn't have to make a big save, but the possession uh, was going the other way. But here we see Joe Cole on the free kick. And great save there uh, by Grinwis getting up and just tipping that with his right hand up and over the bar. A, a good job there. And he, here you see uh, one of the opportunities just on the counterattack uh, by St. Louis. But McCanda Weary coming back there before Stoichkov could get on that ball and, and be able to clear that away. Nice sliding tackle there by Darnell King to start that. And then certainly things got chippy in this one. Four yellow cards in the first half of play. A two for each side. We saw that battle between Fernandez and Sharpie. And we'll have to see how Danielle Chesky calls this game in the second half. You wouldn't want it to, to really to, to get away from her and, and be the headline uh, of uh, the game in this one. You always want it to be on the players, Mike, I think. And uh, we'll see. Uh, and how players react to it as well and what they can and can't do on the field is tough to figure out. That free kick, not on target. That was a big one there. You can see seven to nothing on the shots. That breakaway, St. Louis's best opportunity. You saw that in the highlights. Rowdy's only able to get that one on net. You can see, obviously, the corner kicks, too. 
uh, dominant there for the Rowdies, particularly in the last half hour. Yeah, yeah it was. And uh, Stuart Campbell just has to tell the guys to keep doing more of the same. Don't get frustrated by that lack of finishing. If they continue to create chances like they did off set pieces in the second half, uh, eventually you will think uh, the odds would say one's going to fall in the back of the net. More at the half coming up. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdies soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Fighting power of OxyClean. Stains on the t shirt. I see it coming out pretty quickly. The stain is gone. That's a huge difference. You could see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now. Looks like the stain is coming out. The OxyClean started to lift it up. I'm pretty impressed. OxyClean, America's number one versatile stain remover. Now get the power of OxyClean in a detergent. One cap beats four of theirs. OxyClean gets the tough stains out. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. We've raised the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready?
The USL's all-time leading scorer has added another accolade to his resume. Here's Kelly. And he's got the hat trick! Dane Kelly has done it again! Back-to-back -back games, three goals for Kelly! Dane Kelly is now the only player in USL history to score back-to-back -back hat tricks. Kelly notched his first three-goal game in Reno's first win in club history. Carries the ball ahead into an attacking position. He scored in the second minute. Together before they get another goal. Brown, Kelly, that's two in six minutes. Kelly, he steps over and he puts it in off the post. That is a hat trick in the 66th minute. The second occurred in front of a home crowd, leading Reno to their first ever win at Greater Nevada Field. Brent Richards finds Kelly, and Dane Kelly, goal! Kelly finds that again! Here's Kelly, and he's got the hat trick! Dane Kelly has done it again! Kelly was honored with two USL Player of the Week recognitions following his back-to-back -back performances. For USL Network, I'm Morgan Conklin. We got the sun. We got today. We got the sun. Jumping. Got it right through the night. Sundial, the place to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. USL Soccer here on this TV Tampa Bay. The Rowdies in St. Louis FC are currently scoreless. I'm Heather Donnelly, joined by Rowdies head coach Stuart Campbell. Coach, scoreless here at the half. What stood out to you about the way your team played? Yeah, it's been a good half. Like I said, we, they, St. Louis started pretty well and we grew into the game and we finished the half very strongly. So we want to carry that on into the second half. We want to start the second half how we, we just finished the first. You're in the middle of a very busy stretch of games. You've got a little bit of a different lineup right now. How do you manage that gear going into the second half, knowing that you have a big Open Cup game next Wednesday? Yeah, the Open Cup, that's, that's a different game entirely. We're completely focused here on the 45 minutes and go out and get the three points. All right, thanks, Coach. Guys. Thank you, Heather. And, uh, of course, uh, two weeks from tonight, we'll be back on this TV Tampa Bay. The Rowdies will host the Rochester Rhinos, who they just lost to on Wednesday night. They'll get a chance to... Take it on here at Al Lang Stadium, digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier 463, and Comcast 229. Our pregame begins at 7 o'clock again two weeks from tonight. The Rowdies and the Rochester Rhinos, this TV Tampa Bay. Teams will switch halves and uh, had a chance on Twitter uh, at the half, Lee, and of course you're Levon Godfrey. I'm Sports Tampa. You can always tweet us, and I'll try and get to it after the game, but... Uh, Charles Gallagher mentioned the St. Louis jerseys. Uh, if they had another sponsor, it might be more like a, on that jersey, it might be a Liga MX 
jersey. <laughs> I kind of liken it to a little NASCAR action there, perhaps. But uh, yeah. they're making their way out. And that team will actually make a substitution now, Will St. Louis, as coming in will be Matt Bjurman. Bjurman will be in for Dalgard. So Bjurman in for Dalgard as they make their first substitution of the night. And uh, we saw Stuart Campbell for opting to go without a jacket today, Lee, and first time this year. But he does win the better dress coach along with Precky uh, tonight. <laughs> that one we will give to Stuart, even without the jacket. As he uh, looks on here the second half, again, the substitution, Bjurman on for Dalgard for St. Louis. Yeah, we saw earlier in the year, Mike, the Rowdies going up to Louisville and losing there and returning the favor when Louisville came down here, getting those three points back. Be interesting to see if they can do the same thing against the Rhinos, but the matter of at hand is the next 45 minutes of play as it's nil-nil here. They can crack that back line of St. Louis FC. False start on the whistle. Call it false start. Joe Cole into the circle. They'll start again. And St. Louis looking long as Darnell King heads it away. Manchoff finds the open man and Marcel Schaefer. Schaefer with Fernandez. And again, we'll watch Fernandez going to be whistled for the foul after the play. As coming in and taken down was Stoikov. Uh, I think that bringing in Mats Bjurman, uh, Preki is just trying to get uh, the top two involved a, a little bit more and uh, try to help out that attack through the midfield and the play and transition because we did not say Christian Valeski or Jose Angulo's name very much in that first 45 minutes of play, a key part to their attack. Well, that one sent in looking for Valeski, but Pickens able to catch that one rather easily. He'll roll it out short. Uh, he's looking to keep possession. Schaefer up. Bounces between Cole and Fernandez. St. Louis looking to go over the top for Angula. Off his chest. Collins recovers. and But does go down. Here's Angulo on the left foot. He'll whip it in. Dangerous ball headed away nicely by Darnell King. Second ball to Stoikoff. Stoikoff will drop it in. That one's going to go over and Pickens will have it. Is that ball played in by... Alahanzic. Pickens from the ground. Looking for Cole. Second ball will go out. Actually, that one does go into Cole. Second ball. Patterson was the first one towards it. Cole will have his feet. Good pressure by St. Louis. It will be off of them, and it will be the Rowdies. Throws. You see, Ottawa got a big win. They've been hot as of late. They've moved into the top eight. Yeah, 5 3, and uh, with games in hand, Mike. Cincinnati with the win. Orlando City losing to Charlotte. That one being played up and over I 4. Free kick will go the Rowdy's way. Played short by Savage and King. King looking to go towards the corner. It will be off of St. Louis. It will be a throw in for the Rowdy's. Cole. Able to turn, able to get it across. Second ball is taken down by St. Louis. And now they'll look long. No one's there. And that's going to go to the Rowdy's bench. Akira Fitzgerald. Off and gets the play, the backup goalie for the Rowdies tonight. That one rolling towards the corner. Into the St. Louis bench, throw in Rowdies. Morrell. Now 
Alex Morrell behind the defense. Alex Morrell across the 18. Alex Morrell with the shot, and it's saved down to the right. Grinwis. Yeah, that's that speed, Mike, that Alex Morrell brings. And like I said earlier in the first half, the diagonal runs that he likes to make, the Lakeland, Florida native, getting another start here tonight. Contributing offensively with that quickness. Great touch by Cole. Brings it down. He'll give it wide to Morrell. Morrell back into Cole. Cole into the box. Cole's cross blocked. He'll get it back to Savage. Has to go back to King. And now Morrell again. Manchoff. Savage wide to Schaefer. The pressure by St. Louis again, forcing the Rowdies into their own half. Collins saw nothing, so he's got to give it to Pickens. Nanchoff wants it, but Pickens will want to send it long instead. Second ball falls to Darnell King, who will use his speed around the corner. Inside, Joe Cole. Cole into the area. Cole to the line. Cole across, and now it's blocked. Headed away by St. Louis. King with the second ball. King out to Schaefer. He's got a cannon if he can tee it up, but he'll cut it into the right foot. Savage, pressure from behind. Played back out to King. Can King get to the line? He'll send it across. Looking to go on net, and it's on top of the goal. Goal kick for St. Louis. Not much Grinwis could do there except watch it. You have that feeling, Mike, if the Rowdies get the one that the floodgates might open, but the first one certainly has been the most difficult for them tonight with uh, all of the offense and opportunities that they've had. But give credit to St. Louis back four and the holding midfielders tonight. They've done a great job in winning a lot of those balls into the box and clearing them out of danger. Cole. Able to make the run. He's into the box. Cole with the toe poke, and it seemed to be maybe snuffed out off one of the other feet of one of the defenders. But Cole, dangerous, does get the shot off. But he said it seemed to be kind of a little bit blocked right into this area. Yeah, good run by Cole. I just don't think he got much of it. It may have went off a defender's foot briefly, but Joe Cole was unhappy with himself with that effort on goal. Offside is the other way. Free kick will go to the Rowdies. Morrell. Manchoff has some space. He's going to go across the field to Fernandez. Leo Fernandez off the chest, maybe the arm, but no play on as Fernandez has Schaefer overlap. Now he'll cut it back and pull down from behind. Nothing, no call still on. Rowdy's Joe Cole is furious. He appeared to be pulled down from behind, and not only that, would have been a clear chance on net, maybe even a red card. But nothing is called. The Rowdies send the ball over the goal, and it will be a goal kick. Let's have a look. Cross into the box. Do we catch up with it in time? Difficult to see that angle, but you don't see. Joe Cole may have just been sliding into that ball as well. Here's it going to be a better angle. Walls. There is a pull. There's a definite pull. He grabs the back of his jersey with his right arm and then tries to not play it. So that's a big missed call there in what should have been a penalty on the pull of the jersey from behind on Joe Cole and he has every right to be upset on that one a scoring opportunity denied a penalty kick not called and Cole's around this time this is Plava Plava does not have a caution yet he will now and originally on the call Lee when we, we saw Cole the official or the referee in the same angle kind of surprised she didn't see it we were able to see it from 130 yards away. Clava is being called across. We'll get the card. 
Number five, Conrad Pleva. It was Patterson this time that was taken down, actually. Yeah, it's, it's been a difficult game uh, uh, tonight. As far as the cards and calls, the ones that have been called, the ones that haven't been called, Mike, it's, it's inconsistency, which makes it very difficult for the players to know how to play a game uh, because they don't know how it's going to be called. So there's a lot of bickering back and forth tonight, too, much more than usual. Nanchoff over this two man wall. Stoikov is the one who played the ball back. He's the captain tonight. He's letting the referee know his thoughts, but it will be Nanchoff. 30 yards out, not from the center, sent towards the back post. It's off the chest of Morrell. He'll drop it down, and he does not play it back to Cole. Miscommunication for the Rowdies allows St. Louis to counter. Savage, it's around. Numbers for St. Louis. They have a 3v2. It's sent back in. McKenna Weary, the great tackle as Angulo was coming in. Great defensive play by Tamika McKenna Weary. That is a possibly goal saving clearance there by Tamika McKenna Weary. You could see Jose Angulo jumping up and down in disbelief that he wasn't able to get the opportunity to put that ball on Matt Pickens. Meanwhile back on the sideline Stuart Campbell letting the officials know his thoughts. Caution is going to go out to someone here. Apparently for dissent did not see who that was maybe Darnell King and if that's Darnell King if it's Darnell King he'll miss next week's game at Charlotte. So Darnell King with his fifth will miss next week's game against Charlotte will not miss the U.S. Open Cup. Well at least not because of yellow card accumulation. Schaefer able to run it down. Kandawiri throws a body block in front of Angulo. Pickens miss hits it. Schaefer standing out of bounds. Throw in will go St. Louis's way. And as Schaefer played that one up the field, he gets a talking to. Ball to be thrown in by St. Louis. Loose ball here, and it is St. Louis looking to send it back in. Back across. Walls able to turn. Loose ball. Will try and back into Walls. It's on his right foot. Loose ball still. And Gulo, St. Louis with the dangerous spot, and it's behind the ball. Caught her free kick. Dangerous spot here for St. Louis. Let's check in with Heather Donnelly on the sideline on that caution. Yeah, Mike, we knew heading into this game that Darnell King was one of the players in yellow card trouble with four. The other player on the Rowdies who had four heading into tonight's match is Georgie Ristoff. He's obviously on the bench right now, but if he does get subbed into this game, he'll have to be very careful with the way cards are flying right now if he wants to play in Sunday's match against Charlotte, guys. Well, right now, the Rowdies have something much more to worry about as this ball is just outside the area, 22 yards out. Very dangerous spot as Matt Pickens sets his wall. Five will be in it. It appeared to be Matt Bierman lunging in there to Tamika McCanda Weary. Well, right now, 28. Alahadzic is over it with the right foot and Angulo over it with the left foot. Alahadzic had moved it forward on the spin and now. It is Angulo stepping it off. Alahazic stepping it off. We'll see right or left. Angulo curls it over and it's in the back of the net. The difference. Rowdy's had a shot there. They put it wide. St. Louis scores the game's first goal. Jose Angulo gives them a 1 0 lead. Well, there you have it, Mike. The Tampa Bay Rowdies unable to finish on multiple opportunities. It always keeps them in. And where Michael Nanchoff was not able to finish in that almost exact same position uh, we saw in the first half, Adam Grinwis 
with cement slippers. This time it's Matt Pickens not moving at all on a beautiful shot by Jose Angulo, his fourth of the season, to give St. Louis a 1 0 lead in a game uh, that has been very frustrating, uh, probably for both sides with the way that this is being called tonight. And I don't see Georgie Ristov coming into this game. I would not risk it uh, because of the way uh, that Danielle Chesky is calling this game as we've had one, two, three, four, five, six yellows uh, so far with still 60, 30 minutes to play in the second half. Well, even with that in mind, Georgie Ristov, who leads the team in goals, might be the answer, even if you get the caution. It is early. You would think at some point you do get in the USL the opportunity to get a yellow card rescinded should you go five games in a row without it and it does not you don't have to play in order to do that. So you're right if you wanted to try to get those numbers here it comes uh, in on the tackle Stoikov and as he gets a final warning. For viewers in Tampa Bay after the action on the field check out all the movie action on Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. This TV Tampa Bay digital 32.2 spectrum 630 frontier Fios 463 and Comcast 229. Sent up Rowdy's with control play and it's a set piece by St. Louis that has given them the one nothing lead. Collins on it. Cole onside as Grimwitz know he's offside. Flag came up on the play. Grimwitz had beat to him to it anyway. Tyler David will be making his way in, but Leo Fernandez has the ball here for the Rowdies. St. Louis with the second ball. Savage. Loose ball sent upfield. Collins controls it. So St. Louis, who has been pretty good on high pressure, if they change their thought process and maybe go back and defend a little bit more with the one goal lead. Here's McCandler. Sent up. Patterson. And where he is whistled for a foul behind the play. And substitutions will be made. Tyler David in for Voleski for St. Louis. And it looks like Darwin Jones will be coming on for the Rowdies. And he does. He'll come on for Morell. Up for Angulo. It's going to go back to Pickens. Here's Nanchoff. Two subs made by St. Louis. Here in the 63rd minute on the game. One made it to half. The other one just now. Rowdies have made one. Still with a couple subs. Back to Collins. Patterson. Savage on the loose ball tries to work with King. He'll get it back to him. Darnell King tries to find Jones. It's blocked, and St. Louis has it now. Second ball just over the stretched foot of Joe Cole. I can see that since 
Here's Patterson and Nicole. Akandawiri. We see already with they've moved Angulo up top for Valeski. But David David is playing a little deeper than what Angulo was. So St. Louis kind of going to the more defensive posture. And as they'll have the throw in, the USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news by visiting USLsoccer.com and follow the league on Twitter at USL as Georgie Ristoff gets words from Stuart Campbell. Played back to Grinless. Over the top, Schaefer. It is, though, Stoikoff who wins it. Fernandez looking long for Patterson. Cole looking for Patterson. He was running wide, instead, it was sent back to Grinwis. Grinwis will collect that. It does appear that Georgie Ristoff will be coming on for Martin Patterson. Yeah, so Stuart Campbell ready to throw him in there. Hope he doesn't get a yellow with the way this has been calling late because we saw how he impacted the game on his record setting appearance. Mike is scoring a fantastic goal, cutting in the game winning goal in his record setting appearance for the Rowdies. Played towards. Stoikov who gets it. Stoikov will dribble over the sideline. As he goes over the sideline, Stoikov goes over the wall. Rowdies will make a sub. And Gulo is stretching for St. Louis, whether he's cramping or not. That's something to keep our eye on. St. Louis does have one sub left. Patterson hustles off. Ristoff will make his way on. I do believe we go through here. Obviously, the great goal by Angulo on the free kick as Angulo gets a little assistant. But it was just three minutes prior, Joe Cole being pulled down from behind, which not only probably should have been a penalty kick, but maybe should have been a, an ejection, although Walls was behind the play, at least a yellow card. But no call. St. Louis has the lead. Looks like they'll be ready to make their third sub, and it might be Angulo here who's cramping. We'll see whether or not. I would think he'd probably be the candidate to come off as he limps off right now. Cramping. St. Louis will have 23 minutes to go with the one nothing lead and about to make their final sub. And they do as Octavio Guzman in for Angulo. So Collins back across to McCandaweary. Well, he still have a sub to make. And with the Shorn Brown on the bench, we'll see how long before Stuart Campbell opts to go with yet another striker to see if they can get an equalizer and maybe eventually a winner. They have to get this soon. As you can see, the shots on goal dominated by the Rowdies. The one on goal was the direct free kick. Nicely placed by Angulo. Here is Collins. Schaefer. Back out, Schaefer and Fernandez together. Fernandez whips it in and across. It's blocked by St. Louis, sent up. Second ball, Fernandez again. Brownies again with possession, but not able to get it in the area. It's Collins. To Cole. 
And Aweary loses it. Run off the ball. Well defended by St. Louis. Here's David. Tyler David with space. Slots it and onside. Running away from it is Bierman. Bierman had to turn it away. Good job there by Bierman. Patient too, and now St. Louis, unfortunately, giving it away, but the Rowdies do a poor job of in transition and on the counterattack, give it right back to St. Louis. St. Louis, so if, if the Rowdies don't want to try to get balls inside, Mike, they will keep them outside, put the numbers behind the ball, and let them pass it around the top of the box all night. Just Tyler D. Try to kill that clock off, and massive three points on the road if they can hold on here. Walls. David very effective since he's come on, controlling the ball in the middle. They'll send it out wide. The Rowdy's throw for viewers in Tampa Bay. This TV has your chance to win a PS4 Pro Console and a copy of FIFA 2017, plus a special autographed item from the Rowdies. Watch Rowdy's home games on this TV and look for the clue. Go to mor-tv.com for more information. Still keeping a little higher pressure. That's for Ristoff. Second ball, though, behind it is Sharpie able to run it down and keep it inbounds. But that ball taken away by Fernandez. He'll get it into Nanchoff. Switch to Savage. All the way across over to King. King and Jones will work together on the far side. Defended very well by St. Louis on the far side, and they'll count. Opportunity here as that ball slotted through. Collins has to hurry and gets there before David. Marcel Schaefer is whistled for the foul. And this is probably the first time I'm surprised the yellow card hasn't come out. Yeah, it was a foul, but this time the, the card doesn't come out. But another I would, I dangerous. Would Opportunity. I, I did think this is probably a yellow card and all that. I mean, if we've seen the other cautions. But that's what I'm talking about, the cons inconsistencies uh, in this game. Both teams probably a little bit frustrated by the way this one has been called. So Deshaun Brown will come on. He'll make his way on for Leo Fernandez. I'm sure Brown and Ristoff will work up top. Rowdies will have made all their subs now. And the latest USL news is on Sirius XM FC. You can tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern on Channel 85. Sirius XM FC will also air the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Well, give credit to St. Louis FC, especially late here in the second half keeping the Rowdies outside. It was a great tackle on Darnell King to uh, dispossess the Rowdies of the ball, come down, hold on to possession, force a foul from Marcel Schaefer, and now they have another good scoring opportunity here. The Rowdies really need to try to get some diagonal runs into the box and send the ball into the box and, and not being looking for that perfect play uh, because there's just so many players on St. Louis behind the ball. Very difficult to break them down. They did it much more successfully in the first half than they have here in the second. Well, we had deliberate time wasting here by St. Louis. They threw a water bottle on the field just to have to walk back with that. As Stoikov is still off, it will be Alahadzic who is over the ball. Back post runners coming in. Alahazic sends it in. It's headed up by McCann to Weary. Second ball, Schaefer. He's looking for Brown. Deshaun Brown off his chest, out of bounds. Throw in for St. Louis at midfield. Oh 
Opportunity Stanley will take the throw looking long. And for Guzman. Tavio Guzman. It will be a corner kick for St. Louis. Into the 75th minute. St. Louis leading the Rowdies 1 0. Jose Angulo, free kick goal is the difference. Ball played across. Darnell King wins the header. It's loose top of the box. Guzman has it taken off of him by Rista. Cold. Nice touch. Darwin Jones. Jones, a lot of white shirts behind him. He'll try and find Cole. Second ball will find its way to Schaefer, who's got space. Marcel Schaefer marked by Guzman. He'll whip it in off of Cole's head. Whipped across to Sean Brown has it. He'll lose it in St. Louis. Will have it. That a little questionable. It, it, not debating whether that was or not. I just I, I'm I'm still stunned by the lack of a penalty kick call on that one. I, it it was right in front of the referee. Especially particularly when everything else has been called tonight. And Michael Nanchoff now looks to be. Uh, you know it's. That to me looked like a 50 50 ball Mike that the the Rowdies had won. Yeah there's a little bit of contact uh, but you know sometimes you just have to let the players play uh, and you know again this now this has got out of hand for, for Danielle Chesky. It's unfortunate but you know, this is you know the first game this year that an official uh, you don't know what's happening out there. I thought it was the wrong call on. Morell in the first half where he was being shielded and not being allowed to pursue the ball and the call went against him and he was given a card on the ensuing frustration of it. So that free kick goes the Rowdy's way. 77th minute now. Rowdy's shut out on Wednesday in Rochester. So far shut out through 77 minutes here. Collins looking to go forward. Out to Schaefer. Schaefer across looking for Brown. It's going to bounce. Second ball going to come out to Darwin Jones. On his right foot, Jones shot, deflected, it's now cleared up, it's still not out. Jones on it, has two on him, he'll play it back to King. Darnell King, across the box, headed away by St. Louis. Second ball, ripped high by Nanchoff. It will be a goal kick, and for viewers in Tampa Bay, you can catch the Rowdies at home all season on This TV Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. Find This TV at Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Fios. 462 in Comcast 229. This TV, your broadcast home for Rowdy Soccer. Well, one of those nights for the Rowdies, isn't it, Mike, where the bounces just don't seem to be going their way in the box. There's bouncing around, and it always seems to find a white jersey to clear and not to fall at the feet of someone in green and gold. But a couple of good balls into the box from that left hand side from Marcel Schaefer. That's what needs to happen and have players like Deshaun Brown and Darwin Jones coming in on that opposite flank making a runs and trying to get on the end of it. The cautions have been plentiful tonight. Darwin Jones running towards the side and he'll dribble out of bounds. Again, I'm not trying to harp on the call. I mean, maybe Grinwitz makes a great save. Maybe the Rowdies put it over. But maybe they score. And on a dominating to that point, one nothing lead, St. Louis has to change it up. But 
All credit to Angulo, fantastic finish. And you just wonder like the consistency on the calls on the night, which is left a little to be desired. And to some effect, both teams as well. So, but one critical missed call. As that one's thrown towards the line, it will be a goal kick. King and Guzman tied up. King already with a caution. Again, will miss the Rowdies game next Sunday in Charlotte. Should be eligible to play on Wednesday as the Rowdies will continue the U.S. Open Cup in Miami. If they win, they'll go to Orlando two weeks after that as Arnold King. Dropped in. Great touch. Here's Ristoff. Top of the box. It's cleared away. Deshaun Brown with a fantastic touch. Good job recovering defensively by St. Louis. Yeah, and Georgie Ristoff just lost that ball on his own feet. He had the time. He just needed one touch to get that in front of him, Mike. And he couldn't get that one touch. The ball just got caught up. And he had to slow his run. Here's McCandaweary. Out wide for Schaefer. Marcel Schaefer. Pits that one across. To the knee of Brown, and now it's cleared away by St. Louis. It's still in the box, though. And pushed from behind. It's still free. That one wasn't so obvious to the sense, but did seem to get a little bit of a shove. And now it's free out towards McCandaweary, who has to run it down. St. Louis seems content to defend as that ball comes into their area. Well, that's a good job of reading that one by Stanley. It'll be a throw in for the Rowdies. As you can see, Georgia, the touch by Aaron. Always the numbers there. Good job recovering defensively. This time, someone was down for St. Louis. Stanley in front. Maybe cramping a little bit. Rowdy's with it. Right now, a little bit of a man advantage. Stanley's off the field. St. Louis does not have a sub remaining. There's Guzman. And McKenna Weary will hip check. And this one should be a caution. And it will be a caution. Well, you can't argue that one, Mike. Or Candewary just came right across and cleared out Guzman. And now Guzman's taking full advantage of it. Even if he's not hurt, which there's no way that he is, as he even gets up. And then he goes down just to waste more time off his clock. The frustration, you don't want it to set in, but it's, it's got to be very difficult right now for the Tampa Bay Rowdies not to feel hard done by. And it's not just because of the calls, it's because of the lack of being able to finish and how well St. Louis has defended in this game. The ball just has not dropped for them in the areas. And when it has dropped down, there's been a jersey in white to clear it away. So Precky will be very happy with the way his team has defended tonight and really grinded one out. There's no way they've been in a lot of this game, but you give one team that one great scoring opportunity and they finish on it, that's all you need. And to your point, I don't think we've had to call on Grinwis as an outstanding save or anything to this point. He has made a couple of good saves, but he really hasn't been tested tonight. Now that one very questionable here is Stoikov. Goes down. And this is, you know, I easily sense the crowd's frustration here where that's minimal contact and there is allowed to be some contact in this sport. This is not uh, flag football out there. It's it's a bit of a contact sport. There is going to be balls that are 50 50 and it just has no sense of flow when the whistle is blown after every little instance of some sort of contact. And, that, and that's the thing here. I mean, and to that to that extent these touch things are called and yet an obvious pull down in the box 10 yards with an official and it's not and I don't know if it's just because it's in the box I think if that's just outside the box we've seen that that whistle's called tonight 
And that's what is is aggravating as not just a fan of the rally tonight, but as a soccer fan. Yeah, no, on both sides of the ball. And you know what? And it's if it would have went the other way, St. Louis would be arguing about the way it was because it had the writing on that immediately when there were two cards in the first 10 minutes of this match. You knew that it was going to be a long night in that area of the game. And you, you do want the players to decide the game. And that's a bit of the frustrating part that an official has had an, an out, direct outcome on the match tonight. On a counterattack for St. Louis. David, Tyler David with it. Well, he's just given a little bit too much time here on the pressure. Yeah, that's where somebody, and this could be the fatigue part of it too, Mike, with all these games, when it's getting late and into it, how much is left in the Rowdies tank? And they've got to turn around and, and play on Wednesday. St. Louis able to keep it in, Guzman. With McCanda Weary, that loose ball. Now a chance here, played back across. Pickens with the save. That could have really put it in. Tyler David on target, but at Matt Pickens. Yeah, it certainly would have, Mike. And you can see Matt yelling at his defense. They really just switched off there, didn't they? Yeah, it wasn't even a counter. It was just gradually done out there. And I will remind soccer fans that Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. And an opportunity now as Brown is into it, the area, and Cole has it poked away. Throw in for the Rowdies. Darwin Jones looking for help. In for Brown. Sent back up the field. Collins will get there first. Back to Pickens. Darwin Jones able to turn, slots it in for King. Darnell King. Back across and good job defensively by St. Louis. That's over the wall. It will be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick for the Rowdies. Ball played in. Nanchoff near post. Goal, Rowdies! Neil Collins up and over. We're tied, 87th minute. Ah, oh, look at the smile on the big man's face there. Neil Collins, a perfectly executed corner kick there. They had so many of them in the first half and couldn't connect. And this time, a beautiful ball sent into the box. And there you see Neil Collins get up and over top of everyone. He wins that one and heads that into the back corner of the net. And this one's not over yet. Grinwis complaining that Joe Cole was holding him, but Cole with his hands by his side made Grinwis run around him. And Neil Collins made no mistake from five yards out. Rowdies are tied. Ball sent back. Cole's going to put under pressure. Now up for Jones. Can the Rowdies get a go-ahead goal? They got the equalizer. Late. Cole will drop the throw for Nanchoff. Great corner by Michael Nanchoff on the assist. Through the smoke for us. We'll see Keith Savage into Schaefer. Collins now wide on that one miscommunication with Georgia. Well, Mike, I know one person that'll be super happy about that goal by Neil Collins. It'll be my sister who's down visiting. She's battling breast cancer. Neil Collins was fantastic to come and talk to her at training and spend all the time with her, so great person on and off the pitch and no one deserves that goal 
more than Neil Collins to tie that one up. So I, I thank him personally for spending time with her at training. Yeah, it really brightened her day and down here in St. Petersburg. And now well, he's got the equalizer. Yeah, and he's got a chance here as it's another U.S. Ameribank corner kick. Michael Nanchoff on the corner from the other side. He'll send this across. And this one's headed up, teed up. Darwin Jones with Sonnet, but able to run it down. Here's Schaefer. Schaefer sends it wide for Nanchoff. Just drops it in. Marcel Schaefer continues the run. Now he's going to go on top of the goal here in the 90th minute. And as they sit and wait on that, they'll have to play it out. Injured player into the corner for St. Louis, cramping. Um, we've heard four minutes is going up, Mike, but this is obviously going to even add more to that four minutes, so we could see five or six minutes. Trekkie talked about this before the game. He was glad it wasn't too humid here about the conditions that his team has been training in, and this is no surprise that late in the game with the lack of match play for St. Louis FC that, that they are starting to cramp. Stoikov is the one down. Yeah, and they now it's five that. minutes on yeah. that. But we're into stoppage time right now. They'll just want to roll them off the side here. Is yeah, and that's what they're asking, and that's what should be done. the cramp we'll see whether or not they're going to move him off the side Stoikov refusing to do it he does have a caution I believe earlier you can't obviously get it but he is winking his way off now so Grinwis will have the goal kick we are all square at one in stoppage time. Grinwis also sees the ball. He know that that ball from Schaefer went over and sat up on top of the goal. And he's left it there. And I'm not sure it if he shouldn't just be try, playing with it. Then, trying right? to waste more time. And if something happens, have a complaint. But that ball is still sitting on the top of the back of the net. Collins wins the header. Savage up for Brown. Deshaun Brown. He turns. He'll go at net. He's into the box. He'll bring it across left foot. Deflected down. Brown for the rebound. It's cleared away. Tyler David will just send it up. It's blocked, though. Second ball back by Brown. Brown is run into, and now St. Louis will have the second ball. Good touch, Tyler David. He's been a difference maker since he's been on. He's been very good. But now the Rowdies with numbers. And it's Georgie Ristoff. Cole's running inside. Is behind him. Doesn't get it. St. Louis will look. Maybe they got numbers now. It's back out. Stoikoff who's back on the field. Good touch there, but Collins will get to it first. He'll play it back to his goalkeeper. I thought that Georgie Ristoff could have pushed that out further to the wing for Lowe, who was out on that left-hand side this time. That ball had eyes by Pickens to get to Brown, but dangerous there. there's a lot of white shirts around the ball right now can weary another tackle is on that one Nanchoff with it Nanchoff looking long wrist off is offside Georgie couldn't go and on that hesitation by Nanchoff the line of St. Louis stepped up and brought wrist off offside and they'll take their time as Grinwis Lightly jogs, and knowing he's got another five yards or so to go, he'll spin it into play. 94th minute should have two. We might get a little extra to that because we did have the injury. That one's headed away by McCann to Weary. Schaefer. Here's David, although his pass went from Savage. Played into space to Sean Brown. Didn't go on. Darwin Jones is going to run in. Well, the Rowdies decide to pinch in St. Louis at this point because they are inside what would be their area. About 12 yards from the line. They'll have the throw. Stanley. A 
has a long throw. He get it up the field. Now a chance. Here's David. He's got help. Streaking runners, but Darnell King will be there before it can find its way out to Guzman. Stanley, who has the long throw, being told to get it into play. Rowdy's Nanshoff and Cole will force the ball backwards. Opportunity now is Nanshoff. He'll try to go to Cole. Rowdy's force St. Louis go back to their goalie. Grenwis on the left foot sends it up the field. King. Here's Cavalsetta. He'll get it inside to David over the top. Pickens will get to it. We've hit the 95th minute. That is the final whistle. St. Louis and the Tampa Bay Rowdies finish this one in a tie at one here at Al Lang Stadium. Bodies are dropping like crazy for St. Louis. As He's they not are happy. They, they up. didn't play the full. Five minutes and there probably should have been more added on. That's at Stuart Campbell's right, assist. Heather right now is with Precky. Let's go to Heather Donnelly on the sideline. Thank you, Mike. Coach, you come away from this one with a point here on the road. Are you satisfied with that result? No, really. We should have should have been two nothing up. We had a great chance to to finish the game and then one second we lost the concentration. That that was their actually only shot in the second half. That he meant something. But it is what it is. We'll take the point. We haven't been playing for a long, but they're still they're a good team. And we uh, worked uh, very hard tonight. All right, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you, Heather. And uh, Lee, I can tell you that, that I think there's not a lot of people happy with the way this one ended up. And I think that as the officials made their way off, a few players still made their word too. And Heather Donnelly, I believe, actually, she is now with the head coach of the Tampa Bay Rowdy, Stuart Campbell. Thank you, Mike. Coach, you hang on to the point here at home. What do you take away from this match tonight? Yeah, obviously great character by the guys. Obviously, we, they scored against the run of play. A uh, little bit of a setback for us, but they kept going, they kept going. And I felt there should have been more time added. And if there was, then we would have probably nicked a winner, but it wasn't to be. You're in the middle of a really busy stretch of games. You've got a couple more coming up next week. How do you think, how's the team doing right now, just physically, mentally? What, what's the mindset? Yeah, obviously, listen, you play that amount of games, but they're, they're a fit team. You've seen that tonight. You've been 1 0 down. Uh, like I said, against a runner play, it would have been easy for us to feel sorry for ourselves, but we didn't. We raised the level again, a couple of chances, and then, like I said, if it was a little bit longer, we'd have got the winner. All right, thanks, coach. Guys. Thank you, Heather. We got the post game that will be coming up. We will, though, first. Get this for you are watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater. Solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. <laughs> There's a lot to a name. Especially when that name is a world leader in healthcare. We still deliver the same compassion we've provided for 90 years. Plus the excellence you expect from Johns Hopkins. Together we can conquer the biggest challenges. And offer your child the very best care. When, when it, it comes, comes to kids, kids, choose Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital.
Welcome back here to Al Lang Stadium where the Rowdies in St. Louis finish in a 1-1 draw. But our next match in two weeks, we'll have it right here on this TV, Tampa Bay. Our coverage starts at 7 p.m. as the Tampa Bay Rowdies take on the Rochester Rhinos here at Al Lang. Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier 463, and Comcast 229. But as we mentioned, 1-1 draw tonight. Our post game starts right now. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the express written consent from the United Soccer League. Welcome to Al Lang Stadium for our post-game show as the Tampa Bay Rowdies and St. Louis FC draw at one tonight here on this last Saturday in May, Memorial Day weekend. Mike Pepper alongside Lee Godfrey. And Lee, I think, you know, when we look at the result there at this point, and we'll, we'll be probably talking a little bit about the officiating throughout here tonight, but you got to give credit to St. Louis defensively. We heard from Precky there at the end of the game. They limited the chances of the Rowdies, who may have controlled part of play, but St. Louis did a good job doing what they needed to do in here. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's a tale of two uh, coaches seeing the game uh, very differently. Uh, Stuart Campbell frustrated there wasn't more time added on, thought they might have got one to go ahead, where Precky said we should have won the game 2-0 and not given them that opportunity. Uh, so uh, uh, certainly the Rowdies had their opportunities, though, in the first half to put this one away where they couldn't get that goal as we take a look at those uh, highlights uh, from uh, the full 90 minutes in this one because there were a lot of opportunities, especially on set pieces in the first for the Rowdies. Joe Cole gets this one up and over but it is uh, the keeper getting his hand on that one uh, in a Grinwis and that was the way it was for quite a bit of this and here good job tracking back as St. Louis almost had him on the counter attack Tamika McCandaweary coming in on Stoichkov and making that tackle their best chance uh, in the first 45 minutes of play and it was a scrappy affair as well. A lot of cards given out. That's the battle between Sharpie and Fernandez uh, through this one. Again, uh, you know, there was no call on that play there. Uh, and so what was called and what wasn't called was so frustrating throughout the game for both teams because there was just so much inconsistency. Grinwis coming in and punching this one away. Uh, from danger. Uh, Joe Cole being grabbed from behind there. And that set up a free kick in almost the same area uh, where St. Louis scored in the second half. But there, Nanchoff uh, puts it wide. I didn't think there was much there uh, on uh, a free kick. And that is the free kick that was given uh, for the goal uh, right here uh, as it is uh, Angulo who's able to uh, bend that one perfectly over the wall and into the uh, near post there uh, on, on a, I thought was a weak foul there. But you know what? It came down to the end here. And Neil Collins, the big man, gets up and heads this one in to, to save at least a point for the Rowdies. Yeah, and, and I think on the free kick there, it was actually kind of an advantage that she played on, but it was behind the play, but certainly where we saw that whistle goes. You can see the domination, at least shots-wise, corners-wise, uh, for the teams. But as Precky pointed out, St. Louis did a great job of limiting those dangerous chances for the Rowdies tonight. Yeah, they did, because uh, all the numbers say that this one uh, should be a, a Rowdies victory, but that's the way you scrap out a game. They're not all going to be pretty, and this one wasn't pretty for St. Louis, but kudos to the defending, uh, getting that goal, and Matt Pickens made a big save before they scored to, to keep it uh, uh, at 1-0. We got more on the postgame show coming up. This TV Tampa Bay, the official broadcast home for Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer. Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. 
Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, Pan-Asian dishes, mouth-watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. The fight for the championship continues Saturday at 7.30. Get rowdy at Outland with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Rochester Rhinos. Rochester, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11 and you can meet the players after every game. Rochester, bring your A-game because the Rowdies are going to kick your ass. Come on, you Rowdies! Well, 90 minutes played tonight here in downtown St. Petersburg at Outlang Stadium. Tampa Bay Rowdies, St. Louis FC, finish all square at one. That was a lot of good defensive plays for both teams. And right now, Heather Donnelly with the big man for the Rowdies, the goal scorer, Neil Collins. Thank you, Mike. Neil, you guys were fighting so hard to get the equalizer there at the end. What was it like out there for you? Yes, um, when we lost the goal, it wasn't an ideal situation. I felt it nil-nil. We could have pushed on and probably won the game, but then we make that uphill task for ourselves. We've had a tough week. I think it shows you the fitness of the team that we were pushing really strong at the end. Uh, fair play to St. Louis, it was a really tough game. We wanted three points, but I think the fans could see that the energy and the passion we put in to get back into the game. And on another night, I think we would have taken home all three. We just couldn't quite get the decisions of the ball to fall for us tonight. You scored your very first goal of the season here. Take me through that play from your perspective out on the field. Yeah, it's been it's been a long time coming. I set up uh, Martin Patterson last week, so I was getting closer. Um, Michael Nanchos pinned some fantastic balls this year, um, and I was glad to get on the end of that one. I'd spoke to Stuart Dobson yesterday about changing a couple of things, and it, and it worked perfectly. Thanks, Neil. Guys. Thank you, Heather. And... Uh... Yeah, with Neil Collins, outstanding tonight. Uh, you know, we, we've talked about his defensively, but tonight on the goal, too. It, yeah, he works the both ends of the ball uh, so well. And here's a look at him coming forward, a desperate moment for the route. He's so late in this game, and he is able to get up uh, uh, pretty much unmarked in this one, and he gets the tying goal. Well, Neil was celebrating there, and it was an equalizer, but... Uh, Everyone got their sister kiss tonight here as the Tampa Bay Rowdies and St. Louis FC tie at one. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we want you to eat better and feel better with smoothies made from better for you ingredients and food crafted with the bold flavors you love, like our Chipotle Chicken Club flatbread with grilled chicken, bacon, pepper jack, and chipotle mayo, or our Island Green Smoothie with fresh kale and spinach, banana, mango, and pineapple. Life's too good to settle for anything less. Chipotle Chicken Club and Island Green Smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies.
showing real people the stain fighting power of OxyClean. Stains on t-shirt, I see it coming out pretty quickly. The stain is gone. That's a huge difference. You can see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now. Looks like the stain is coming out. The OxyClean started to lift it up. I'm pretty impressed. OxyClean, America's number one versatile stain remover. Now get the power of OxyClean in a detergent. One cap beats four of theirs. OxyClean gets the tough stains out. Welcome back to Alang Stadium. Rowdies and St. Louis tie at one defensively. They were asked uh, Tamika McCandaweary to make a little bit of an appearance tonight because Damian Lowe was suspended. Right now, Heather Donnelly is standing by with Tam. Thanks, Mike. Tam, you got your first USL appearance of the season tonight. How did it feel to be back out there? Yeah, it's always nice to play. Um, obviously disappointed we didn't get the three points, but um, we've got another big game on Tuesday. We'll, we'll take the, the draw and we'll, we'll move on. What do you take away from this one, getting the point here at home? I know you guys are disappointed in the, in the result, but what do you take away from the performance? Well, I thought we showed great character. Obviously, we went um, uh, a goal down against the free kick, and um, the boys did really well to come back. Uh, great header from Neely. Um, and I thought we played we played really well. You know, I thought we were the better side. They're a good team, and they'll be up there at the end. So, um, it, you know, it's a good point in the end. You had a lot of games recently and a lot more coming up. It's a really busy stretch of this season. How is everyone doing physically, mentally? What's kind of the mood in the locker room recently? The mood's really good. You know, obviously, um, we're quite a tight-knit group and um, everybody's waiting for their chance and um, is ready to take it. So we're good. We're just um, looking forward to games at the minute um, trying to put as many points on the board as we can. Um, so, yeah, the mood's, the mood's very positive. All right. Thanks, Tam. Guys. Thanks, Heather. And uh, Tam, still one of the leaders. Uh, last year, the captain, Joe Cole, has that honor. But uh, he was your player to watch tonight. And he, he came up big defensively. Yeah, he was. I think when you can slot in someone like uh, Tam now into that center back position beside Neil, you're not going to miss a beat. They know each other so well. And that's what he brings right here. So calm, cool, collected. He doesn't panic on the ball there. He, he makes the stop all in one. Doesn't allow it to go up for a corner kick. Pushes it forward. So just a, really a solid defending. And this was almost a goal changer there. Look at Angulo. He's he's can't believe that that ball didn't get through to him for an opportunity. So uh, great uh, minutes for McCandewary tonight. That was critical, and we have a little more to come up on the postgame show. Rowdies and St. Louis tie at one. This TV Tampa Bay, the official broadcast home for Tampa Bay Rowdy soccer. We got the sun. to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, Pan-Asian dishes, mouth-watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. The fight for the championship continues Saturday at 7.30. Get rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Rochester Rhinos. Rochester, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11 and you can meet the players after every game. Rochester, bring your A-game because the Rowdies are going to kick your ass. Come on, you Rowdies! Welcome back to Al Lang Stadium, Rowdies and St. Louis on a night where the Rowdies controlled a little bit of play, but it was a, uh, a couple of opportunities that perhaps Lee 
were really difference makers here as the Rowdies uh, were looking for that first goal, didn't get it, and I think the fans were a little upset. We saw a lot of fouls called tonight, but when it came into the box, we saw a call that maybe should have been fouled. Or yeah, I think you're right. You're absolutely Joe Cole getting pulled down here by Walls in the box. Uh, absolute pull on the jersey. Uh, that, to me, is an easy one. I'm actually surprised a handball could have been called on Fernandez. They're bringing that one down, but it wasn't. But then you see the, the, the pull on, and she's right there and does not make that call. Joe Cole's absolutely incensed. Uh, Neil Collins, towards the end of the game, gets up here and gets the game tying goal. But it, it, it certainly was uh, three minutes after that play, there was an innocuous yeah. foul. Uh, that led to their free kick goal. So uh, that was so frustrating in that five minute span for uh, the Rowdies. So they, you know, they manage a point and they get up to, to 21. FC Cincinnati jumps up the fourth as well with a victory uh, tonight as well. So uh, the, you're, you're up there right now, but you certainly want to get those full three points, Mike, at home, don't you? Yeah, and you can see Louisville City with four games in hand, trailing by six points. So, uh, you know, a little perilous on that number two, but it is a key point. And the Rowdy's in the midst of a busy schedule. You're facing a good team. And uh, here's what's coming up. Not listed there, and you can go to Rowdy Soccer, is the Wednesday night game as the Rowdy's travel to Miami to face in the U.S. Open Cup match against Miami. Then, of course, at Charlotte on Sunday. We come back here two weeks against Rochester. Then it's a stretch of road games. On the 14th, if the Rowdies win, they'll play at Orlando in the U.S. Open Cup, at Richmond, at Pittsburgh, and I think the next month of that's even at Charleston. So critical schedule here, Lee. Yeah, absolutely tough. A lot of games on the road, Mike. Absolutely. And, of course, we will be back here two weeks from tonight as the Rochester Rhinos, who the Rowdies lost to on Wednesday night. They'll look for revenge uh, here at Al Lang Stadium. Coverage starts at 7 o'clock. Kickoff, of course, at 7.30. This TV Tampa Bay, Digital 32.2, Spectrum 6.30, Frontier 4.63, and Comcast 2.29. But tonight, you know what? They scrambled, and they got the much-needed point. Yeah, you do, and Matt Pickens made a big save late in that game that could have made it 2-0, that that would have been it, zero points. So take the positives out of this. They never gave up. Uh, they managed to get that uh, late goal to tie it and uh, come out with something. You absolutely do. I'd like to see maybe a few more goals here and there, but opportunities still could be going. So for Heather Donnelly, who's been working down on the, uh, on the field, Lee Godfrey, I'm Mike Pepper. If you missed anything, catch the match in five.
here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. Continues Saturday at 7.30. Get rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the rowdies take on Rochester Rhinos. Rochester, bring your A game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11 and you can meet the players after every game. Rochester, bring your A game because the rowdies are going to kick your ass. Come on, you rowdies. 